couldn't find my history. My nationality was missing. See, somebody or should I say some people was vicking me. Victimized by what the education system wasn't giving me. I took nothing them people was teaching literally. Cause I got a little voice in my heart that whispered in me. Qualify everything you hear and don't trust nothing you see. Egyptian bloodlines crossed with yours, not European. And when Christ was born, the wise men that traveled to go see him had African gods on. So Italians couldn't be him. Especially when not Jesus. Gotta re examine him even. You need your phones, boys.
that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Act 4. All members must preserve these holy and divine laws, and all members must obey the law of the government, because by being a Moorish American, you are part and partial of the said government and must live the life accordingly. Act 5. This organization of the Moorish Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of this said government, but to obey hereby. Act 6. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are part and partial of this said government, and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians. Because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779, and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim the free national name to be recognized by the government in which we live, in which they live, and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained over Jew Ali, the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendant of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and the southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and partial of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Jew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God, Allah. Noble Jew Ali, the founder, Moorish American prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day, through his holy prophet, Jew Ali, amen. The Moorish Science Temple of America, home office, 2905 5th Street, Southeast Washington, D.C., 20032. Thus I read our uh, seven acts from the divine constitution and bylaws. I now bring your attention over to the great meeting is on. Quran question for Moorish American, page seven. Questionnaires and additional laws for the Moorish American by the Prophet of Jewelry. Act one, grand sheets and governors, and heads of all temples, all businesses, each said temple must be approved by the Prophet of Jewelry. Before acting upon any member, let it be financed properly on any line of life that will cause this member to sacrifice finance, etc. That will cause the support of any group of members. Any former officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under heavy restrictions, etc. by the prophet or the grand chief. Act two, all members are to attend their debt meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around on his meeting period, shall be fined by five dollars, fifty cents on the first case, and on the second, he will be fined one dollar, which will go on his emergency fund. If members is working, his monthly dues must be paid, and if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe for as much as he is able to in the Moorish uplifting fund, because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act three. It is lawful and divine duty of every good member if he is able in if he is able in finance to aid me in saving the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people and justice and protection. Let it be he or she, according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, as I have the power invested in my hand. And I will have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act four. All members, while making a public speech, must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group, because we are to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Act five, all members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school, and the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire and let the members exercise his five senses who is able to do so because out from your Sunday school comes the guidance of the nation. Act six, with us all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are part and parcel of the set government, and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians. 
because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live in the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained over the world, the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish American are the descendant of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and the southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and partial of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Temple. Members must pay their dues and keep in line on the necessity of the Moorish Temple. Then you are entitled to the name of faith. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother in the industry and become a part of the uplifting of all humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Jew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God, Allah. Thus I read the seven additional acts from the Quran questions from Moorish Americans. I now bring your attention to the Holy Quran of the Moorish Muslim Temple of America, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Jew Ali, by the guidance of his father, God Allah, the great God of the universe, to redeem man from the sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life of his father, God Allah. I'll take a read from the divine instruction from the Holy Prophet, chapter 25, a holy covenant of the Asiatic nation. Ye are the children of one father provided for by his care, and the breast of one mother hath given you son. Let the bond of affection therefore unite thee with thy brothers, that peace and happiness may dwell in thy father's house. And when ye separate in the world, remember the relation that bindeth you to love and unity, and prefer not a stranger before thy own blood. If thy brother is in adversity, assist him. If thy sister is in trouble, forsake her not. So shall the fortunes of thy father contribute to the support of his whole race and his care be continued to you all in your love to each other. Islam? Islam! Our meeting has officially been opened according to the divine instructions from our Holy Prophet of Jumali, guided by Allah. The incomprehensible. So I, I welcome our sister Dana Marucci here today in her demonstration, and I will now call on our grand sheep. Yes. Thank you, Sister Barry Bay. Sister Al Barry Bay, praise Allah. Islam Moors, Islam. First, I rise and give praise to the great God of Islam, the highest to the last prophet of these days, Prophet Muhammad Ali. I'm the founder of the More Science Temple of America. I give honors to all of the divine prophets, uh, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. We give honors to the forerunner to the prophet, Brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Uh, I'd like to give honors to, again to all the leaders of the More Science Temple of America. I give honors to Brother C. Kirkland Bay, Brother F. Nelson Bay, Brother J. Blakely Bay, Brother All of Ill to the present, Grand Sheikh Moderator, Brother R. Jones Bay. I would like to give special thanks to Brother uh, Jones Bay. Uh, for his uh, continued support uh, of the of Temple Number 34, and for Brother Jones Bay's continued progressive support of the research of the Moore Science Temple of America, supporting uh, uh, those that are in support of the Prophet uh, Nobu Tu Ali. Thank you, Brother Jones Bay. Um, I give honor to all of our national leaders. I give honor to the Assistant Grand Chief, Brother P. Chase Hill, and to the Grand National Chairman, Sister S. Russell Dunbar Bay. I give honors to uh, her assistant, Brother Vive Elbey. I give honors to the Grand National uh, Secretary, Sister Imo Bay, and to our assistant, Sister M. Johnson Bay. I give honors to the Grand National Treasurer, Sister Jones Bay, and to her assistant, Sister Arthur Ill, Sister J. Arthur Ill. I give honors to uh, everyone and everything that Sister Barry Bay just gave honors to. Um, I give honors to the Charter. I give honors to the two flags, the Moorish flag, the American flag, and the Moorish flag is five highest principles known to man. The flag that is over 10,000 years old. Some say it's over uh, 50,000 years old. I give honors to all of the uh, uh, members. I give honors to all of the prophets' literature. 
I wanted to quickly open up. I want to take a short reading from the Holy Quran on more sides of America. I'm going to turn to page 57. And I'm going to read from chapter 47. Again, this is the Holy Quran on more sides of America. Uh, Circle 7, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Drew Ali, by the guiding of his great, by the guiding of his father God along the great God of the universe to redeem man from his sinful, fallen state of humanity back to the highest plane of life of his father God Allah. Divine, the divine instructions from the Holy Prophet, chapter 47, Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. And I'm only going to read a part of this because it pertains to with uh, Sister Marnici. Uh, we'll be going over with the Moors uh, this afternoon. Instruction number one reads, the inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Moab, by ancient Canaanites. From the ancient Canaanite, singular. From the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Amexa, the first true and divine name of Africa, the dividing of the land between the father and the son. The dominion of Cush, Northeast and Southeast Africa, and Northwest and Southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire, with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren, who sojourned from the land of Canaan, seeking new homes. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from north east and southwest Africa, across the great Atlantis, even into the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands, before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. The river Nile was dredged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade with the surrounding kingdoms. Also, the Niger River was dredged by the great pharaoh of Egypt in those ancient days for trade, and it extends eastward from the River Nile westward across the Great Atlantic and was used for trade and transportation. According to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro, black, or colored race attached to the human family because all the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race, descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation from the Holy Land of Canaan. What you are today, what, you are, what your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the decent nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator of all himself. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Most we are, are greatly honored this afternoon to have uh, presenting for us uh, Sister Dana Reno Barnici, uh, historian. Anthropologist and acclaimed and accredited by more Shamaric, claimed by more Americans and well credited uh, in, her, in her field. Uh, author of the uh, blog spot um, uh, Afro AfroAsiatic.blogspot.com, uh, and contributor to uh, Ivan Van Sertima's um, book. Uh, Golden Age of the Moors, in the section uh, African Heritage and Ethno History of the Moors, Sister Marnici uh, contributed a, a, a paper uh, uh, entitled Background to the Emergence of the Early Berber and Arab Peoples from, the, from Prehistory uh, to the Islamic Dynasties. Uh, it is definitely an honor. Uh, Sister Marnici is here this afternoon. She's going to presentation entitled Migration of the Moors, uh, Migration of the Ancient Canaanites. Uh, ancient Moabites and Canaanites, um, and this is a part. This is the second in the uh, four-part lecture series that we're putting on here at Temple Number Thirty Four, uh, including uh, af uh, astrophysics, uh, which was uh, held in December by uh, Councilman uh, Brother Khaled Bay. Uh, Brother Khaled Bay will be here again on the seventh of March. He'll be doing an advanced civics uh, lecture as well. 
Um, I would say that it's very important. I'm going to talk about real briefly before I introduce um, um, Brother Anai Obey, who will introduce Sister Marnici. Um, why it's so important that we understand history. You know, we humble ourselves to truly understand the details of the vast history, our illustrious, illustrious history of our forefathers. Um, we say here in the more scientific of America that the Prophet of Ali blessed us with the, um, providing us the surface of the Quran. Holy Quran is more scientific of America. Bless us with many degrees, 360 degrees of knowledge are available uh, to the members of the more scientific of America. In our Quran, it talks about the attainment of virtues being the highest learning. That's right. The attainment of the principles uh, according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Uh, unity, equality, you know, uh, mercy and right. Um, and if that is the first learning, I always you know, think about what other things that we need to study, what we have to study. I always say that either history or law, possibly, will be very important next in all the other things, including science and all the other degrees that we study. It's very important. I believe uh, John Henry Clark. Uh, said, and also I believe uh, uh, the forerunner of Brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey said, a people without a, a knowledge of the history is like a tree without roots. Mm. Um, I first got a chance to uh, 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 hear Sister Dana Marnici, and I learned about Sister Dana Marnici uh, through uh, the, the, uh, the research and the, the uh, information provided by Ali's men, uh, and also my brother uh, Dean Way L., um, I might have been the first person who was known by the D. Way L. as uh, Brother Abba Lord, Lord Abba, uh, who introduced her and began to present the Morris Divine National Movement with her research and her information. Um, so I would like to not only thank uh, Sister Dana Marnici for taking the time out uh, to come here to speak today, and I'd like to thank you for your contributions to the Morris Divine National Movement. I would also like to give thanks to uh, Brother Way L., uh, Brother Anai Obey. Uh, Brother Hassan Tunica L and the Moors of Ali Men for uh, opening our eyes up to this great resource that is Sister Dana Marnici. And with that, I want to introduce to, to introduce Sister Marnici. I'd like to call on the grand sheet of uh, Syracuse Study Group number 34, uh, Brother S. and I obey. Uh, Many know him as Brother Sharif. Uh, if, you can, if you could, Brother Sharif, somebody take Brother Sharif's post. Praise Allah. Islam, everyone. Islam. I want to first rise and give praise to Allah, Almighty, Eternal, and Incomprehensible. I would like to give honors to the last prophet in these days and times, Prophet Nubu Ali, Savior of Humanity. I would like to give honors to the foreign and honorable Marcus Mosea Garvey. I would like to give honors to everything that Sheridan gave honors to at the onset of this great, great meeting. I want to give a special honor to each and every one of you here present. I want to give a special honor to um, our guests and presenters to Dana Marnici for coming out. Uh, well, I'll be very brief because I'm excited. I'm very excited to see, you know, to see and hear what this has to present today for us. Prophet Nubadra Ali, you know, said, come link yourself with the families of nations. Mm -hmm. So what he brought for us, yes, is to make us proud. It's to, we should feel proud, right? But it doesn't make us better then, it makes us better off. Mm. It enables us to meet with everybody else in American society and worldwide on an eye-to-eye -eye basis for the first time since our fall in the late 15th century. So that's the idea. So, so what the prophet gave us isn't just true on Friday nights and Sunday afternoons. Mm. It's not confined to the physical temple location, right? Nobody has a monopoly on truth. Truth is but one. So if it's true here, it's true everywhere. You know, we have a saying in martial arts we say there's only one way to tell the truth. There may be many different languages in which it comes in, mm -hmm. but truth is truth. Mm -hmm. Only one way to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So our teaching, what the prophet brought us, for us to show our due diligence and our love to our prophet and our love to the creator who sent him, is that we, as the prophet said, this is an intelligent movement, <coughs> we need to represent it intelligently. 
Uh. So when we come across people, or when we come across, yeah, when we come across people in the academic world, in the scientific world, in the lay world, that have information or substance that confirms and verifies what our prophet taught us. Mm. That's powerful. Because that's another link in linking ourselves back to the families and nations. And that provides a means where equal respect happens almost simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm here also, you know, in addition to representing Temple 34. Temple 34. Um, <laughs> and the Syracuse study group, um, facilitated by Temple 34, I'm also here representing the Education Subcommittee of the Revitalization Committee of the Board of Science of America. I'm proud to say that not only does Temple 34 boast three of the members of that Education Subcommittee, it also boasts the chair mm. of that subcommittee. Mm. <laughs> Our sister, our sister L. Barry Bay is the chair of that subcommittee. And so we have a huge responsibility in this particular subcommittee. This lecture today represents a part of that responsibility. And it adds value, added value, to our responsibilities and also to the members. This type of information arms us, right? What it enables us to do or what it does is it adds. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it, right? So on the way down here, right, um, I was thinking about the gap that we have between the scientific and the educational, or the scientific and um, the scientific world, scientific community, and actual lay society. How many of the show of hands read scientific journals? Yeah. But not many of us read scientific journals. So like the brother was saying earlier, he said, I've never heard of this today in my But that's one of the reasons why. Mm. She's in, in, the, in academia and in the world of anthropology, she's known worldwide. But that's another world. Mm. You see, that's a world that most of us as lay people are not familiar with. Mm. So to have access to that is a special treat for us, right? What is our religion? Islam is that new or old time religion? Old time religion. Well, what's the name of the organization? The name of the organization is the Moorish Science Temple of America. There's a particular order. There's a particular order of um of antiquity that has this as a model that we can adopt as well. The method of science and the aim of religion. So on the way down, I was thinking, how can we? It's not necessary for all of us as lay members to be, or lay people, to be scholars. Or to necessarily even be scholarly. But we want to be able to benefit from the interaction with scholarship. Fun. Right? We want to be able to utilize scholarship at our level of understanding. So, to interface the scientific advantage that we have in our hands with the members, I came up with the thought of developing and establishing mm -hmm. a Moorish American Anthropological Society mm. with the assistance of Sister Dana Marnici. Mm. She wow. kindly agreed. It's love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest um, and, and um, presenter, Sister Dana Marnici, career anthropologist with over 30 years of field experience with Afro-Asiatic peoples and Afro-Asiatic culture. Mm. A prolific writer. One of my favorite pieces, and this is something you can write down and Google. One of my favorite pieces that she wrote is called Recovering the Hidden Ethnogenesis of early African and Afro-Asiatic peoples comprising the Moors of North Africa and Spain. Recovering. Let's say that again, exactly. Recovering the hidden ethnogenesis of early African and Afro-Asiatic peoples comprising the Moors of North Africa and Spain. The title itself is powerful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially for those of us in the movement. Because who would have thought that there'd be a scientific paper written about your religious doctrine? 
or supporting your religious doctrine. And ancestors, exactly. This is powerful. When I first, um, one of the first conversations, I always relate this conversation. And correct me if I, if I misrepresent it slightly. When um, the sister I heard, one of the first times we talked, I quoted to her um, the last sentence of Acts 6 of the Divine Constitution of Bible was, the Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. And I also quoted to her chapter 47 in Instruction 6. Her response was, that's very simple and poetic language to describe a history that has not been known. Mm. As a matter of fact, that history is secret history, she said. Secret history. That's powerful. Mm. As a matter of fact, when was it when was it made known? Whose work made it known? Well, I mean, you mean academically? Yes, ma'am. You said myself? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? I mean, I learned it over time that it's actually something that the ancient Arabs felt mm. when they came from King and Meredith, Mecca and southward of Mecca. Mm. Uh, and that was actually brought up kind of in a book called The uh, Bible came from Arabia. Mm. Yeah. So that was in the 1970s. You know, people have been kind of kind of aware of it. You know, a few people in the world have been kind of aware of it, but yes. Basically, um, it's still a secret thing, you know. Still a secret. That was something that people are kind of uh, arguing against because it goes against the philosophy of the Zionism and, and other, you know. That's correct. Complicated. One of the conversations, and, I, and, and, and I'm going to finish, one of the conversations that Sister and I had earlier, we were talking about, she made a comment about the world is changing. If you're looking at C-SPAN, if you look at Fox News, if you look at CNN, you see it. Right. Everybody and anybody with eyes and ears can see that the world is changing and it's changing very fast. And the only way to keep up with the change, right? Lao Tzu says in the, in the, in the Tao Te Ching, right? The book of changes. To change with change is the changeless sea. And our prophet Nova said that the greatest of humans is to be what? And Immutable, unchanging. See how that works? But the people that are going to be able to keep up with the change in the world is the people that, that, that are willing to change their worldview. The prophet, Noble Drali, brought a new worldview. And when you have a critical mass of people carrying that worldview on their dial plate, that changes the world. That's what changes the world. That is how the enlightenment cause the world to progress. Mm. They change the thinking of people. Uh. I'd like to take a reading from the Holy Cross and Moorish Science Temple of America, the body prepared by the noble prophet Drali, and the God and Father God of the great God of the universe, to redeem man from the sinful and fallen state of humanity, back to the highest plane of life of his Father God, Allah. I'd like to take a reading from divine instruction from the Holy Prophet, page 3, to know thyself and thy Father God, mm. Allah. The lessons of this pamphlet are not for sale, but for the sake of humanity, as I am a prophet and a servant is worthy of his hire. You can receive this pamphlet at expense. The reason these lessons have not been known is because the Muslims of India, Egypt, and Palestine had these secrets and kept them back from the outside world. And when the time appointed by Allah, they loosened the keys and freed these secrets. And for the first time in ages have these secrets been delivered into the hands of the Muslims of America. Thank you for listening. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest and presenter, Sister Dean Peace. 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 Islam, Sister Money, so I'm going to just adjust the camera. And so you can begin. Thank you much. Thank you. 
Briggs, one on one for Justin. Oh, wow. Sharif talking about belonging to the family of nations. But what's important to me in this, you know, dealing with the Moors is that, or especially Moorish Americans, is that they know that it's not just a family of nations, it's a, it's a family of nations that started civilization. Mm. All early civilization and technology came from the ancestors of the Moors who were Afro-Asian people. Now, I don't know myself if they came from this area, which is Turkey. Let's see. I'll know where that came from. OK. So those, those, um, that sculpture you saw was actually located here, Castle Hoyuk, in, in uh, what's modern Turkey, that African-looking woman, or goddess. Um, and they found many, you know, rock paintings in that area, which is now called, uh, which was anciently, anciently called Anatolia, Anatolia or Asia Minor. Um, and these people were actually similar in appearance to the people that are called um, Amonic. Amonic people on the Nile. Oh, yeah. Omotic, O-M-O-T-I-C. So this is actually you know, between 5,000 <coughs> and 8,000 BC, before Christ. And you can see this still have the same hairstyle. Um, these people have nothing to do with the ancestors of later European peoples, or later, uh, later or modern day Asian, Asian peoples, <laughs> Eastern peoples. These people were there up until uh, probably, well, some of them might even be there now. But um, that was one of the early ways of African, Asiatic peoples into that area. Okay? It's the Neolithic, Mesolithic uh, era. Long before the start of um, the civilizations in, Ak in Akkad and that kind of thing. Yeah. So that was the mother goddess civilization that was spread across Europe and Asia and Africa. And that was mainly an African or African Asiatic civilization. Or I, I say, now nobody hit me for this, but black people, <laughs> the black, uh, black people civilization, because the people had strong melanin color. Okay, they weren't, they weren't, and they were, were people related to Bushmen there. There were people related to modern Omanic people. The Ethiopic people or Abyssinian type people are actually mixed with. Uh, Armenian and other Christ, Greek, other Christians that came out down into the land. But this guy is right now, in, um, it's representing the Amada people of the Nile Valley who used to jump over cattle, just like these people in right here. This is a painting in again Turkey, which is above Syria, mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. north of Syria, north of Canaan, uh, and and they, they were. There were found there some of the earliest megalithic sites on Earth, mm -hmm. just like it's in Africa. Okay, so also um, in Malta, which is below, you know, in the area of Crete, uh, which is in the Mediterranean, they had these types of people that used pottery similar to a chica. Anta Diop says to. Uh, the pottery of so-called Bushmen, now called the San, from Eagle. Okay, and that's why they look like, he looks like actually. Mm. But um, that was, they say it's 4,000 BC, it looks like a little later to me, but so 4,000 years before Christ, black people were, you know, doing these sculptures and had megalithic civilizations, large uh, civilizations built of stone mm. across the world, including South Africa, uh, and then the Americas, um, just as here in the show, the hairstyles is still worn by certain people. But um, the pottery, as they say, of early Neolithic Europeans, which is this is the Neo uh, Neolithic European culture, was um, 
similar to the Bushmen of Akron. I use the word Bushmen because many people know what the Bushmen, you know, look like. Yes. And they don't know the term son or from where. Okay. So yeah. This would be a hit source. So I don't know how many people of you are here. No, mm -hmm. Sure. Say that again. I'm gonna turn that down. Uh, this one you say that again. You're trying to get the name of the last slide. Yeah, I think this one. Uh, yeah. Yes, I think. Yeah, ancient Neolithic. That uh, means it's a period before um, the more modern history or historical period where people were writing a lot about the civilization that they were in. So Neolithic. Well, if you don't catch everything perfectly in this, uh, you can the recording will be available later that you can okay, perfect your notes. Absolutely. All right. Um, also, also important about this um, these sculptures and these paintings is that there are no there are plenty of skeletons of these people in Europe and in um, in um, Eurasia, which is where Turkey is, but these. Skeletons, which are similar to those of Africans, you know, Bushmen and um, East Africans and other types mm -hmm. of Africans, are simply referred to as Mediterranean, the Mediterranean <coughs> race or the Mediterranean type, which is why a lot of people don't understand or know that people really affiliated with Africans occupy those areas of, mm -hmm. like I say, uh, Eurasia, where Syria, the Levant. Turkey, um, spreading out into Iraq, uh, past Iraq into Iran. So up until a very late period, these people actually remained. And one of them, uh, the Sixos woman, is actually representative of the Arabian people that um, invaded Egypt at a certain time. Right, mm -hmm. right. And as you can see, she's not, like, also not, um, of the people there now, mainly, but of an African sort, or Afro, uh, Afro uh, Asiatic sort. Can you, can you break down the Hyksos a little bit? Uh, well, the Hyksos were a people that invaded what was called Kemet, uh -huh. and not, uh -huh. not Egypt, actually, Kemet. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I heard. In hmm. the second millennium, end of the second millennium BC, so you see again, you know, we're talking about thousand years before Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these were actually what you call Semitic. They call them Semitic people. Semitic refers to the Afro-Asiatic language group that these people brought and culture that these people brought to the Near and Middle East, mm -hmm. and they were the earliest people to speak the Semitic dialects. Most mm. Semitic dialects are actually found in Ethiopia. Mm. People don't know that. And the earliest Semitic dialects, like in Akkad, Akkad were actually interpreted from knowing their dialects. Mm. Akkad and Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. Hicksos, mm -hmm. I was going to say the Hyksos are uh, accredited for con conquest of Egypt for, I forgot how long, like, I want to say 900 years, a long time. Well, for a certain so amount of time, they were cast out. Is that accurate or not? Um, I'm not sure if it was 900 years. I think it was a little less than that. But the problem is, problem is that the chronology of Egypt and the Near East is actually quite confused already because they were basing it on um, certain criteria, biblical scholarship that was turned out not to be true. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the reason I'm bringing up all this ancient stuff is that just to show that worldwide, or you know, where they're currently is called the Near East, these you know African-affiliated peoples that are called Afro-Asiatics, you call Af Asiatics, I guess, <laughs> were you know building civilizations, and their skeletons are never referred to as like Afrocoid or Negroid or whatever. They're usually mm -hmm. called the Mediterranean type. But so here is just, um, I'm not really going to go into the, the Arab portion of the Moors because they, they also play a part in the, you know, the early Moorish people because of their color, mm -hmm. because of their color, which was the same as the Moors at that time. 
Um, so I just want to talk about the Nabataeans, who were um, basically represented what were called the Ishmaelites, or people of northern Arabia, mm. also called the Kedar, or Kudar. I'm, I'm not perfectly sure how you pronounced it back then. Uh, but so Ibn Nadim, who was a Nabatean himself, Sorry. <laughs> Ibn um, Nadim quoted actually another Nabatean saying that Nabateans were people of black complexion. Mm. And they said Nabateans are important because they actually were exemplified the people of uh, ancient and medieval, medieval northern Arabia, meaning the peninsula, peninsular Arabia. <laughs> so I don't know if you're familiar, let's see, let me get these. So here's Arabia, and here was where Nabatia was in um, that the Greeks knew and wrote about. Mm. Uh, right in this area near Petra and next to what's now called Egypt. Uh, north of Hejaz, where Mecca is, and north of Canaan. You see, everything down here was Canaan. Mm. And it's right across from Sudan and Eritrea, Ethiopia, that area. Mm. Okay, so here again is the um, Anatolia or Turkey where you see this sculpture. So this whole area of the Near East and then and North Africa actually was at that time occupied by this similar, you know, related people who actually first worshipped a mother goddess um, and had other features in common, other cultural features in common. Okay, so the Bosnians were in this area. And all, the importance of the Nabatians, as I say, is that they were the Ishmaelites. Mm. Always, the Ishmaelites were always considered black in European um, literature. Uh, and in Middle, Middle Eastern literature, they were called Nabat, Al Nubait, or Nabit. And that's why you see, um, Al I think Al Damashki was the one that said that Nabi just meant the black, the blacks, mm -hmm. the black people. Or Nabi meant the black people. So um, the Nabatians were also supposed to have lived in Mesopotamia and, had, and were the first people to be called Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. okay. So he, Ibn Damashki wrote Nabatians, the Sudan, the Copts and the Berbers belong to Ham in the chapter, in a chapter called The Cause of the Black Complexion of Ham. Among the children of Medit are of Canaan, sorry, Canaan are Nabit. Nabit signifies black, yes, so it was him that wrote it. And that's about the 11th century, and he was the 14th century, only 600 years ago. Mm. They were saying that. Uh, let's see. The descendants, and then another somebody said, in the, I guess Akbar al Zaman said, the descendants of Sudan, son of Canaan, were many peoples that multiplied in the Maghrib. Maghrib is yeah. North Africa, or Northern Africa. About 70 of them. Okay. So Canaan, though, most people today think of Canaan as a place in the Levant or where Syria is and Israel, modern Israel, but in, in reality, According to earlier texts and according to, um, well, according to documentation, the real Kanana people and uh, their descendants came from this area of the lowland called Tahama, mm -hmm. um, which is the first, which is mentioned in the first passage of the Old Testament. So it says, so darkness went over the Tahama or the deep. It's called the deep. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that was the area of Canaan. So all the allegory related to the Bible actually comes from the people of that area who were in, in uh, the area south of Mecca. Oh, I can't even see this. Uh, let's see. So leading into Berry Berry, the reason I brought up the Batians and the Canaanites is that Berry Berry or Berber was an early 
That is an early African eponym. I mean, their name, very, very, is still used today. Mm. Very, very. By the Kanuri, by the Zagai people, or Zagawa people, very, very is still the name that they use. Um, so let's see. This is just from a, a website, if you see here. Anyway, it says uh, the Ga the Gawa people are called are also called Berry or Zakawa or are essential are essential African Muslim people group of Eastern Sudan and Western Sudan. So we're talking oh, sorry, Eastern Chad and Western Sudan. They also occupied Libya or occupied Libya, but they started kicking a lot of the darker skinned people out of Libya, so mm. now there's not any there. Um, Kanem, which was founded by the Zagawa, is part of the land of the Berbers, it says. In the farthest west in the land of the Sudan. Some say that Kanem are people of the Sudan, Yakut. So Yakut was an early medieval Arabic author, I think he was about the 10th, 9th or 10th century. Mm. Okay? Um, so uh, here I've just listed, I don't know if you guys have read any of my stuff before, but I list um, a lot about the Berbers and how many, many Arabic speaking people refer to the Berbers as black, mm -hmm. black skinned people. Mm -hmm. um, and they, the five major tribes are called Masmuda, Gomara, Sanhaja, Zanata, and Hawara. So the Masmuda also now called the Shla, and some of them are very dark skinned and some of them are very fair, almost, you know, maybe mm -hmm. Germanic looking. Mm -hmm. But so Abu Shama of Syria, Ibn Butwan of Iraq, Nasir Khosrow of, of Persia or Iran refer to them as black skinned uh, people mm -hmm. in, involved in the Fatimid period um, as, as military, actually, especially mm -hmm. when that's as military. Um, the Gamara were a branch of the Masmuda. The Gamara today in Morocco are very fair skinned. Okay? Sanhaja referred mainly to the Tuareg and the and the Zagai or the, the Gawa peoples, as well as the Gara peoples. The Gara or Kara are also called Quran, which is a different word. And they are also located in Chad. Um, Chad and um, but what I'm going to try to show is that these people also moved in ancient times and in medieval times across Africa. And that you'll find the same names of the people across Africa, especially West Africa. So the Zanata were another branch. Um, and I just named the names Zawaga or Zagawa, Jarawa or Jarawa, and Queen Kahina, a Berber leader of Jarawa, uh, Sonink or the Barabir of Arabic, Arabic text, El Barabir or Berber. The Garama or Songhai, Jerma Songhai, Zarma Songhai. Uh, the name Songhai also comes from Sugai or Zagai. And then there were also a different people called the Tuareg, who are the ones that wore the veils. The Tuareg also came from East Africa later. When I say later, I mean later than the, um, early, the Berbers. Because the Torah really weren't Berbers, but they're called Berbers today. They wear the veil across their faces. They're very tall, usually, or the nobles are very tall, and they wear um, purple or indigo um, robes. Yeah, which is I call the Phoenician purple because that's where they actually came from. The Phoenician um, and the Philistines, the real ones. <laughs> um, so, but. We're going to find out about the Zanata. It's very important to know about the Zanata because actually that most of the people in here come from the West African people that were of Zanata stock. The Sonic and Songhai people were actually considered of Zanata stock. Um, then there's Hawara, who were uh, the fifth group, supposedly, of the Berbers, major group of the Berbers. Okay, and they were partly, mainly Tuareg. Okay. So, here is um, early Carthage, and it's important to know about early Carthage because 
apparently according to the Portuguese explorers and other people, the the Gawa or Azuaga as they were called in um, Portugal were the founders of Carthage. Mm. And as we know, Carthage was said to have been built by people called called Phoenicians like, mm. or Canaanites. Right. So I wrote down here the, the writing of uh, a Louis del Marmal Cairo Vajal of Granada in the Iberian Peninsula in the 16th century. He says, the Azuagos are one of the peoples who spilled into Berberia and Numidia, most of whom are shepherds, because that's what the Zagawa and Zagai and Sukhai were. Others are weavers of cloth or cowherds. You'll find that among the Takuri and other Songhai Songhai people, cowherds. A poor people who live in and around the hills and in caves. Now this is the, mostly the North African Zagawa we're talking about here. Mostly tributaries of the local kings of the Arabs. Okay. <coughs> These people, according to African authors, originally came from Phoenicia and were mm. called Moors or Moroforas. Wow. They were thrown out of the land of Joshua, son of Noah, mm -hmm. or Noah, wow. who lived with the Egyptians. Now, the word probably used there was Mitzrayim, not Egyptian, but <laughs> passing to Libya and afterwards founding the famous city of Carthage 1,278 years before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a Portuguese talking about when <coughs> the Canaanites came to Africa. That was, you know, over, <laughs> we're talking about over 3,000 years ago. We're not talking about something recent. We're not talking about an Arab invasion. We're talking wow. about something very long time ago. For many years, they lived in this city, in this city a great stone city with a fountain saying, we are the people who fled the presence of the thief of Joshua, son of Noah. Wow. No. Okay, so that's recorded by, like I said, this guy. I thought he was Portuguese. Let me stop you for a quick second. Sure. I just want to turn the brightness down so that the camera can catch a little bit better. It's having trouble. Okay. It's not working. It's not switching. Okay. Okay, so here, here we see um, one of the castles of the Azalaga, they're called Moors, as they called West African back then, uh, of Barrios um, in, is this Portugal or Spain? I can't remember. But you see it's the same kind of um, <laughs> Masonic, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, this is a later version of what they were doing back in Carthage, you know, thousands of years earlier. But, let's see, can I just do that? Um, So, just to let you know, show you that the um, Zawaga and Azawaga and Zagawa people were all the same people, called Zanata. So, in the um, UNESCO History of Africa, in the 1988 edition, it talks about this guy, Munez, wrote about the Zagawa in the conquest of North Africa and Berber resistance. He says, the predominant confederations of Kabayas of the Zenata were, Kabaya meaning just clans, Hawara, Luwada, Nafusa, and Zagawa. So, and other authors use the term Zawada, as I'll show you. So, also in an encyclopedia of the world Muslim, um, this guy wrote uh, about the Zagawa being mentioned by Herodotus. Herodotus or Herodotus, I don't know how you say it. Um, as the Zoaks and, Zugat and the Zugatani is later in the Roman era, they talked about the Zugatani south of Carthage. Okay, so right directly south of Carthage, where these Azawaga are said to have founded, you have the Zug Zugatani in Roman and Byzantine eras, in Greek eras. So a letter from St. Augustine, who himself was half Berber, half African, mm -hmm mentions Arzugas and 
Reggio Arzugo, south of Tripolitania, which is uh, modern Libya, mainly. Speaking of Arzugatani, one encyclopedia says, it is very probable Probable that this name is composed of two elements, Zakia, which is a, merely a variant of the Zakia of the Berber genealogists, and Ar. This second element uh, recurs in the, na the name of the ancient Libyan tribe of Arzukitani, identical with the Zawiks of Herodotus and the Zawaga of the Arab historians. Mm. Okay? So again, they're talking about the same people, the Zawaga, Azawaga, uh, the Gawa. Oh, I have to go back. So the two main people involved that I'm talking about today in the African civilization that were called Moorish were the Zagai, and Zagawa is the Kanuri, uh, it's the Kanuri um, translation of Zaga, or Zagai, and the Gara, who are also called the Garama, Garamantes in ancient times, um, and Jerma, after the uh, town they founded. So places of the, the Gara were called Garama, that kind of thing, Garama. All right. So uh, where did I get this from? A colonial times, a colonial period author in Cooley, or in his Negro land of the Arabs, Macrisi II, or al Macrisi, who was, a, I think, a 10th century or 9th century. No, he was 11th century Arab, Mamluk, Turkish, actually writer in Egypt. Or Ibn Said, from whom he copies, says that all nations between Abyssinia to the south, Nubia to the east, and Barca to the north, which is in Libya, and Tekur, which is in you know, West Africa, are called Zagai. Mm. So Takur itself, roughly about 1040, was the first principality to be converted to Islam. And it was apparently known as Zaga. Okay, so that was 600 years ago that he spoke of that Mamluk, the Mamluk, meaning the Turkish, because the Turks were actually the slaves of the Arabs too. Mm. So at that time, so. Um, and uh, one author writes of Beauville, who was another author who wrote about Golden Trade of the Moors, which is one of the earliest. Um, half decent writings about the Moors. He says that Beauville, it's a review of his work, he assumes that this group perpetrated a great Berber white blood or Zagawa invasion of the Sudan, which probably took place in the 10th century, mm -hmm. and then established themselves as a ruling aristocracy throughout the Sudan from the borders of Algeria <coughs> to the Senegal. So the use of the term white blood here is because most people in, the, in our Western academia, even until today, thought that the Berbers were white. Mm. They didn't even know. This guy didn't even know what the Zagawa looked like. Wow. The Zagawa of Chad and Libya and, and Niger, uh, Sudan are not white, even though they might, you know, we'll get into this later, but some of the um, lot of these people, including the Samik, call themselves the whites, but it's, it has to do more with culture rather than their appearance. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, let's see. Another author speaks, or says, the Zagawa Berbers banished the Gobir from the air. So this is just to show you that um, people knew that the Zagawa were Berbers. Okay? And you'll see that here are some of the Zagawa down here. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the Zagawa, but like I said, the Zaga, these Zagai peoples are crossed or across uh, West Africa, Sudan, Sahara, and into North Africa in the early days. Um, wait, I just want to try and use something. Okay. So, and you also have to know that the early Berbers were always, always said to have come from Yemen and or Canaan. And the reason why people don't get confused about this is because they say, well, why do they say they come from two different places? Mm. It wasn't two different places. Canaan and was in the Yemen for the ancient peoples of the world. Wow. 
Not in Yemen is southern part of Arabia, the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. Part like I, that area I showed you south of Mecca was where the Wadi Kanana is today, and they call themselves. It was the Valley of the Kanana people. Okay, so that's where the name Canaan comes from, the Kanana people who were black, and that's why in all tradition you find, uh, especially the Syrian tradition of the Levant, which is where where supposed Canaan's supposed to be, they're the ones that say that the Canaanites were black. Mm. Okay. Well, anyway, let's see. The first people to inhabit Barbary were five colonies of Sabians under Ibn Ifriqi, who was wow. an ancient king of Yemen. That wow. Ifriqush Tuba, or the Hittite or Sabian king, uh, is very well known in ancient Arabian and legend and inscriptions, actually, I think, too. Uh, so they gave birth to 600 <laughs> tribes of Berbers, which you can take as Berry Berry. And that was in the 10th century, and Ibn Rakit wrote about these, the travel or the movement of the Sabians, otherwise called Yemenites, otherwise called Canaanites and Israelites, <laughs> to Africa. And as you, you saw before, apparently it was very, you know, it wasn't any recent thing, it was something, they started coming in the middle of the uh, or, yeah, about the middle of the second millennium BC, in, back into Africa. Okay. Also, Ibn Qutayba wrote, uh, Wab Ibn Manaba said the, well, let's see. I think, I thought Wab Ibn Manaba, Manaba was older than that, was before Ibn Qutayba. But anyway, Wa Ibn Manuba, Manabe, which is a name of an Arab tribe, and this guy was actually part Persian, not, not Arabian, said the sons of Ham were changed into blacks. Some of his children went to the west. Foot settled in India and Sindh, Kush and Canaan's descendants are the various races of blacks. The Nubians, the Zanj, the Koran, the people I was just telling you about, and the Zagawa. The Zagawa and Koran live together in Chad today. Chad and um, Libya and um, I don't know if the Quran is still in Sudan, but the Quran is still in Jordan. Because all of these people that they're talking about also lived in the Arabian Peninsula. Um, so the Ethiopians, the Copts, and the Berbers were all black. And that's what. Why is he saying that if they weren't black? Right. Mm -hmm. It's not right. It's the ninth century. Ibn Qutayba said that. The Akbar al Zaman again says, among the sons of Sudan, son of Canaan, the Ishban, the Zanj, and the people that multiplied in the Maghrib, about 70 of them. Now, it so happens that Quran and Ishban are actually mentioned by um, Al Tabari as, you know, they're part of the Horites. If you look in the Bible, you'll see those names mm. uh, under 36. Did anybody read the Bible, like I said? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told people. In the Bible, but chapter uh, Genesis 36 talks about the Horite people or Edomites mm -hmm. and Esau people, people that were brethren to the Israelites. Okay. Let me know if you need a reference, Sister Monique. You have. Um, well, if you go to what was it? Genesis 36. Um, later on we can do that. Later okay. On. But what I wanted to say is Sudan was also before it became just the name of you know. All people of black complexion used to be the name of a tribe, one of the tribes of Arabs mm -hmm. related to these people, Canada people. And so was um, Kara, who I wrote about in this forthcoming book that's coming out. I wrote about the connection there, but a little, just a little bit. Um, so Bari or Bari or Baria is a name found in the Torah as well. A son of Asher, the Israelite and father of Heber and father of Berzea, that's in Genesis 46, 17. And there's a reason we know that, um, uh, the reason I know that this berry is related to the berry, or bari, is because of something that I found out from researching another book that was actually, actually related name. Now in Zagawa, it means mouth, and also in the, in the uh, Hebrew, it means it's related to speaking, a fountain, uh, a spring, a water, a well, but also to speech. And that's why actually the Greeks, early Greeks used to 
call the uh, people that they couldn't understand the barbarian people that mm -hmm. language they could not understand the barbar they say barbar barbaria so that's where that word came from but this word was actually originally an ethnic name for the african or Afro-Asiatic people that lived in Cayman or southern Yemen, southern Arabia, which which is now called Yemen, and which was anciently called Yemen too. All right, I just want to make sure I went into that. So the importance of the belly branches of the Gawa is the belly actually lived also in Sudan um, and also in early Arabia, medieval. You know, they're throughout the medieval, medieval writings of the Arabian, of the Arabs, or Arabic speaking people, because it, it's important to note that when you say Arab today, you're talking about nationality, and you're not talking about necessarily a population that's related um, biologically to the ancient Arabs, mm. or the ancient Arabians, because the early Arabs were just basically Arabian people. And the different peoples in Arabia at that time, according to all the all the things that I've seen, all the documents, you know, medieval writers were black or were Kudar, which is the name of a type of, you know, dark skin like we have. Mm. So Kudar and Samar, Samra, Sumra is were words used to describe not only the people or inhabitants of the Arabian Peninsula peninsula but also the peoples in Ethiopia and Sudan. So today the word literally Kudar or Kedar, it's related to the word Kedar, mm -hmm. means green, literally green. Yes. yes. But when it talks about um when you talk about color, there's also it's become like in Arabia today it's become like a um a derogatory term for dark skinned people. So now they're calling the people from um, India that work in um, Saudi Arabia and things, you know, they use that term to describe it. And it's, and it's become a source of black pride for those people too, to be mm -hmm. called, you know, that, by that name, Kudar mm -hmm. or Akhtar or whatever. Kudar. All right, now Kudar, this name also is related to, if you've never seen the Bible, Kedar Lumar, Lakmar, Kedar Lakmar, the, um, I think it was the Elamite or whatever. But anyway, um, it's a biblical name, and Beli is also a biblical name, or Bella, which is one of the, the Gawa divisions. <coughs> okay, so I, I'm just going to read here because it's a lot of information. The Gawa have a division called the Beli or Bilia. In Abyssinia, they're known as, they were known as Balawi and in ancient Nubia, the Blenis. Mm. Um, because there's been more than one invasion of the belly, belly in, into uh, Originally, the Blenis were related, and then later on, during the Arab times, the belly and Al Belian came over and settled in Egypt and Sudan. Um, so, but the, these Agawa belly are related to the earlier wave of, of Bella. Over. Mm. Bella was an Edomite, better known as ba Balaam. Mm. He's also called Balaam in the Bible. Or Balaam, um, like I said, I don't know how you mm -hmm. that's right. Balaam. Um, he worked for the Moabite, one of the Moabite rulers, and he was a prophet. Um, so the belly have were also a branch of the miners in um, in in uh, northern Arabia, across into Iraq. They remained that, and they're still found in the, the Jordan Valley. Um, and they're found in Sudan. So they've always occupied the mines in Nubia. They were miners, okay? And they were part of the people in, in Jordan, they were part of people called Hameda or Hamathites. The Hameda mm -hmm. are still in Jordan and in Arabia. Um, and that's where the word Ham actually comes from. Mm. Hamada or Hamad. Mm. Hamad. And in South Arabia, they were called Hamdan, the Hamdan. In South Arabia, they usually added the A-N for, you know, for some reason there was their dialect called Musnad, they added an A in it a lot for a lot of the um, uh, places, place names. Kataban, for example. Kawalan, which is Hawila or Havila. Um, so, but anyway, you have to know that. You have to know about linguistics and stuff to know that. Mm -hmm. so that's why people, other people have can't forget it. All right. Um, so the Bella or Bali, like the Juhaina and Cain, 
were clans of the Kuda Himyarites. Otherwise, you know, earlier they're called Sabians, Sabians. In ancient Yemen and actually medieval Yemen. They were the Bela of the Torah. And Beltine is still a you know a capital, Begawa capital in Chet. Bela in the Bible was a diviner. He was the son of Beor or Bawara. Um, he was related to Jobab and um, other you know biblical figures. Uh, so in Numbers 23, 24, you will find him. Mm. He's also identified by the, in Arab tradition, and I say Arabic-speaking tradition, as Luqman, Luqman, son of Bauer. Okay. All right, so here I was just talking about al Aldrisi, who was talking about the Belian in Nubia. This country is sometimes subject to incursions of black, and I emphasize black, <laughs> because people think the Arabs were not, you know, black. Black cavalry is known as Balium. It is said they are Rum, meaning Christians, who have professed the Christian religion since the time of the Kit, ancient uh, <coughs> Coptic Christianity, before the coming of Islam. Mm. They wander in the country of the Beja and the Abyssinians and come as far as Nubia. Okay, so those are the Arabic. I'm sorry, the Arab invasion of the... That's what the Arabs looked like when they invaded Egypt and Sudan mm -hmm. in that era. <coughs> Anybody have a cough drop? <laughs> <coughs> anyway, you said a cough drop? Yeah, because I'm going to... I'm going to make a room for you. No. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, Amal Kavala writes... The Belal, also known as Timurites or Hadareb. <coughs> One thing I just want to say about the um, about the Bela and the Arabs of Sudan. A lot of people think the Arabs of Sudan are not real Arabs because they're dark skinned. Like many of them are much darker than most. True. The people that came over into Sudan before the 11th and 13th century were black people, because that's what Arabs were. Okay. Mm -hmm. So El Hakami and El <coughs> El Adri uh, what's his name? Anyway, other writers talk about how the Arab resembled the Beja and the Abyssinians. But you can find this in books and in my blog spot I talk a lot about this. The Arabs in in um Lisan El Arab which is um, written in the 11th century by another Arabic person, and I think he was born in Tunisia, Al Ibn Manzur. He says that most Arabs are cooter mm. with mm. hinky hair. Mm. And they'll tell you that. Yeah, they don't tell you that. <laughs> and, to be, and he also says, like in other Arabic texts, and I say Arabic to distinguish from Arabs because the early Arabs were not just Arabic speaking, they were a certain biology. They were mm. all, you know, they were dark skinned people affiliated with Africans. Mm. And that's why you go to Is um, European texts, they call the Ishmaelites, who are North Arabian, these evil black Saracens, right? Mm -hmm. mm. And the Saracens that came up into Palestine, the first Saracens and the ones that, um, King Richard of uh, the Lionheart met were people from Yemen, and he calls them black too. And so they you know, the, or the Crusader text that talks about, that records the Crusaders meeting the Saracens in Palestine, talks about these Saracens being black as blacker than dirt. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also the Moors is being black too. Okay. So the Moors were the Western extension of these people in Arabia. Mm -hmm. people. But it's just that they came at such an early period that, you know, other people may have now claimed their, <laughs> their territory. Um, okay. Amal Fadlala, who is an African writer, African woman, writes that be below, also know, um, you can't find it? <laughs> That's okay. I'm a good no! Oh my gosh! No, 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 no. Oh, we have one call, that's all. 
The bellow, also known as a hemorrhage or hydrorep, which refers to Hadramaut, which is the southern part of the Yemen, where you'll still see a lot of the darker Arabs, or the darker uh, Yemenites too, because the Yemen now has also changed. The Bella's original homeland was in Yemen. They asserted superiority over the Beja, you know you guys know who the Beja was? Mm -hmm. And enslaved some of them. The power of the Bello, or Hadarab, declined after the exhaustion of the gold and emerald mines and the abandonment of the port of Ayadab on the Red Sea in the mid 14th century. Okay. okay. Great. So, um, again, this is just to show you that the, these people that are considered Hinnerites and Sabians, you know, from Hadramaut, and Hadramaut comes from the Bible too, with the word in the Bible, um, as sons of Shem. The direct son of Shem, mm. um, they were black. You know, they basically looked just like other Africans. Mm. Wow. But that's not the first time you've heard it, right? No, there's, there's a lot, lot of people that associate themselves with Shem. Shem. That's, that's why, why I'm, that's mm -hmm. why I'm well, okay. that that dispute that refutes that. Well, <laughs> yeah, the early peoples of Shem were not, you know, modern Eurasian people or mm -hmm. modern, right. modern Syrian looking people. Mm. Or especially not modern European looking people. Mm. They were basically Katan peoples. The Katan and Pel even today they call them Palaj, Al Palaj, Peleg. Peleg and Katan were peoples of the southern portion of the Yemen who were connected with Africa. Mm. Um, but that's another whole other lecture that I, mm -hmm. you know, I, was, mm -hmm. I keep going off track here. But anyway, <laughs> here's the belly of the Gawa. The belly portion of the Gawa. They're not, um, the blend, they're the sense of more of the blends probably than the modern Arabs. Okay, um, so here are some of the Zagai people I'm talking about. The Kanuri, who said a Kanem. Okay, that's in uh, the area of Chad. And the Kanuri also extends to Niger or Niger. The Zagai settled in Kamnuria and are still called very, very, by people like the Hausa. The same people became traders among the Hausa. See the text, the Kambaran, very, very, the formation of a specialized group of Hausa, Kola traders in the 19th century. So a lot of the Hausa also came from these people. They also settled in Bornu. You ever hear of Bornu? Yes. Mm -hmm. So in all these Zagai areas, you'll see these people are very um, acquainted with horse breeding. That was one of the um, the um, specialties of the Zagai was horse breeding. They've been doing it for ages. And when they went up into Portugal and Spain, the name Zanet or Zanata, which was a, you know, these people, like I said, the Zagawa Berbers were considered Zanata Berbers, a plant of the Zanata Berbers, okay, as well as the Gara or Jarara Berbers. So the Zanata became the word for a horseman, Jeanette, they call him Jeanette. Mm -hmm. Even today, that's what it's called. Um, and I was reading another book that talks about the cowboys and how actually the cowboy tradition started with the Berbers, but of course yeah, they don't know. I was, I was thinking of why, why they had the brothers working at the racetrack, you know? Uh, no? <laughs> <laughs> at the racetrack mm. back in the day. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh yeah, and the, the African the, the people that came over also knew a lot of that right, horses right, and right. cattle raising and that kind of thing. Yeah, so mm. we wish I could talk about that today, but I would. Mm -hmm. But anyway. I'm going to weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the tribe of Sakai that lived in the mountains near the western source of the Niger. And that's also, of course, the name of a, the river, Great Great River. It means Great River. And that comes from the Afro-Asiatic languages. And with the Tuareg between Sokoto and Kagu. The, the tribe of Songhai lived near Niger and were called Songhai, or Sokai. It can hardly be doubted that the name is, is the same as the Zagai. When one calls to mind the previously mentioned connection between the Tuareg and the Zagai. So the, the Zagai or Songhai actually were the people that were among the Torah too, that lived with the Torah and called themselves the guy and became known as 
And even today in Marzouk, in places in Libya, you'll see the Gairoi people um, with the Tuareg, and in Nafusa too. There's people in Nafusa, the Nafusa and the Nafusawa Berbers are both Tuareg and um, the Gairo related, or Teda Tubu. Um, so, Jerma Songhai was connected with the Jerma capital of the ancient Garamati. That's what. Um, if you go to the Golden Age of the Moors, you can also. Golden Age of the Moors by Dr. Van Sonoma. I wrote mm -hmm. a long, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe 100 pages of, mm -hmm. of an article, and it talk, I talk about the Garamantes and their connection with the uh, Africans, but I've learned a lot more since then. Um, they are connected with the, the Za or Zuwa dynasties, which is thought by some to be connected to Zu or Dawi, a title of ancient rulers of Yemen. So, if you have a book, which everybody should get this book if they don't have it, but, uh, Timbuktu, wait, this is not one. From Babylon to Timbuktu. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't have that, you should get it because it, it actually goes into a little detail. There's some stuff wrong in it, but it goes into a little detail about the connection between the Jewish, um, Jew, Judaism, or the Jews, and these people, the, the, the guy people that founded uh, the, the Za dynasties, mm. um, and they say in their manuscripts they say that they came from Zu al Ayman, which was actually an ancient king of um, the Yemen, mm. um, that, and also um, the Tariq al Fatach talks about them being descended from uh, Sagai and Kor, and also um, Air, sorry, Paris and Harun. But because people do not know about the traditions of the Arab and you know, you know, even the, the Genesis, you know, where it talks about Moses and stuff, they don't know that they're talking about Moses' brother and the descendants of the Levites. Mm. Korah, wow. Korah, um, Taris is Jatir or Jethro, who is a, the brother-in-law, I think. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a whole, you have to be very familiar with a lot of different um, aspects of this history to, to figure it out. But fortunately, another book you have to get is called uh, The Unknown Arabs by Tariq Berry. Another book that has a lot wrong in it, but it has a lot right, a lot of very clandestine information that mm. you wouldn't have gotten it. I mean, I would not have gotten so far without that book because he talks about the meanings of um, color term terminology in, in Arabia. And it talks about some of the manuscripts of um, these Sudanic peoples that I'm talking about, these Sudanic peoples who were the Moorish, mm -hmm. also the Moorish peoples. Which who are the unknown Arabs. Unknown Arabs by Tariq Berry. Berry, T-A-R-I-Q, Berry. Yeah, yeah. He's actually Arab. He's not even mm -hmm. African American. I thought he was African American. He's actually Arab. Interesting. Yeah, he's a black. Arab. But he, I think he doesn't want to say exactly where he's from because he doesn't want to get like I think you know there's some kind of racism or something going on over there. I forget if he told me he was. He did tell me once. I forget if it was a Gulf country or Morocco. Wow. But anyway, so. <laughs> Ancient Ghana or Ouagadougou. This is, you see this um, masonry, how it's similar to the Zagawa, Azuwa masonry of the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, and also the Carthaginian, which just reminds me of this big, well, not, it's not the record, but the Azuwaga castle I showed you before. Look, all right, here we go. Look at, this is in Spain. Do not even cover this? It says, there's a log in Spain. Pierre Bichard in his book, The Social History of Muslim Spain in the, and the Legacy, in the Legacy of Muslim Spain, says, the names of present day towns or large villages such as Mequinenza in Aragon, Azaneta in the Valencia region, and Azawaga in the south of the present province of Barrios. Still, for instance, we call the tribal names Niknasa, 
Sanada, and Zawada of Maghrebi origin. So many of these places in Spain and Portugal were named after the Berbers that were there. Yeah, in the place? So the, actually all three of these names are Zanada Berber names, but the Zawada and the, and the um, Magnasa, the Magnasa were actually Tuareg, while the Zawada were the Zagawa. So these are two different African groups. So this is the Sonic, and this is Wagadougou of ancient Ghana. Um, okay, so here are some more people related to the Sonic, and their their traditions that bring them from Canaan and Yemen. Okay, so it says Dukon, Kona, Dukon Kona. The Dukon origin myths state that the Dukon were closely related to the Kuneri. They were also called Kona or Kona. The largest of the Dukan states was Kona founded some time before the 14th century. The claim was that, quote, that both groups were descended from migrants from near Mecca, mm. who split up somewhere in the Sahara, with one group found in Kanem, which is Kanuri, and the other moving south to create the Dukan states. Here it is in the history of Nigeria. Now, it's just, this is just to show you that the Africans themselves are the ones that are claiming to be sent from, you know, Canaan and Arabia. Not, so when African Americans start talking about, oh, well, we came from Egypt and all this, um, mm. I'll just say, well, the Africans beg to differ. They say they came mm. from further, mm. further east. <laughs> mm. <laughs> wow. so that, but, you know, I could talk about something today, but I, I'm not going to get into it. I'll just, I'll just leave it at Egypt is. The chronology of Egypt is messed up, mm. and that's the problem with why we also have not found out about these ancient African relations, because these people came in much earlier than the er, some of the dynasties that we're seeing, particularly like um, King Tut dynasty and all that stuff. Those dynasties are much <laughs> later than people, people are saying that they uh, are. Mm. But I just can't you know, go into that now, because that's a whole other couple books. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So the Dukon people who are predominantly found in the southern part of Taraba state came from Yemen, according to oral tradition. History has it that about 350 AD, the Dukon left Yemen together with the Kanuri and Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba. and settled, yeah, Yoruba, Ashe. Ashe. <laughs> Now, and settled at Ngazar Gamu. Now, the thing is, it's probable that not all Yoruba came from, you know, Arabia, but a lot of the people, because that's why you have this Jewish tradition among the Yoruba too. Mm. Okay, you have it among the Kanuri, you have it among the Yoruba, the Igbo, they all have a, a Jewish Igbo. tradition. How do you pronounce it? Igbo. The Igbo. Igbo. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Well, there's also Igbo, Igbo. Igbo, yeah. yeah. Um, so oral traditions suggest that they migrated from Yemen in the Arabian Peninsula. These are, I'm reading different books, from different books. So I'm not just saying it myself. See, it says, quote, quote, according to oral tradition, quote, oral tradition suggests that they migrated from Yemen in the Arabian Peninsula to Egypt between 350 and 360 AD. Well, that's not true. They migrated from the area of the Nile that time, not from the Arabian Peninsula and settled in Yazoganu. Mm -hmm. They later entered Nigeria between the Mandara Hills and Lake Chad and settled in Yizm, Upper Gongola Valley. Owing to the internal dissension, part of the Dukon speaking peoples, the Kanuri moved to the Upper East and formed the Kanem Bornu. Okay, so so far we have all these different societies claiming that they came from Yemen. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kanem, Kanem Bornu, Hanuri, um, Gadargamu, Hausa, you know, it's just general, it's generally over Africa, at least you find this. Okay. And when I first wrote on this site called Africa Resource, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. I first started first reading this article about, um, oh, this is ancient Ghana, mm -hmm. Sasonic Ghana. civilization, ancient Ghana. And this is actually Mauritania, what's now called Mauritania. Wow. Yes. So 
Sunday morning. Sorry. Yeah, near Sunday, well, not far from Sunday. So here's a Berber depicted very recently in the, in the probably the early, maybe the 19th century. The Berbers of Barbaria. Barbaria. It's a, it says here, it says more. Moro di Berberia. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's an Italian, Italian, in Italian, see? So the painter was Italian. The bar, the, now, quote says, the Barbara would thus appear to be, this quote is from the UNESCO History of Africa, and it's a writer who wrote about the ancient Sahara. He says, the Barbara would thus appear to be a group of the Sonic, might not al Barabir Barbara, Barbara, He'd identify with the black people known as Al Barbar, who, so, lo so local tradition has it, formerly inhabited the city of Dar Tichit in southern, southeastern Mauritania. Hmm. I just showed you Dar Tichit in their kingdom. I mean, this is just one building in Dar, in Dar Tichit. The whole town, you know, big town was like that. Hmm. And you're talking about what, starting in the third century? Third century. Wow. Hmm. Um, some, let's see, some observers identify this legendary people with a people of black skin agriculturalists referred to as the Barbaros. What's it sound? It kind of sad. Yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> that's where we get our stuff. He's frozen too. And he's, <laughs> <laughs> he wants a new black. <laughs> he wants a new black. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and look at that hood. Yeah, and that's a Berber hood too. <laughs> in the ancient Portuguese chronicles, or these were agriculturists referred to as the Barbaros in the ancient Portuguese chronicles, and appearing in the 15th and 16th centuries of the Christian era in the Mauritanian Ardrar, alongside the Azanega, or Zanaga, Zanaga, Berbers. Okay. So the painting says Mora de Barbaria. Tanik, or otherwise called Saracol, yes. So, the Saracol are another African people of the same, you know, group. Um, so, the general name for the traders in the medieval times was Wangara or Wakur or Wakari. And that's why they talk about, you know, the Kur. If, if you look in the Bible, it talks about Kur being the, I think, the grandson of Levi. Mm. And, um, Jethro was the brother-in-law. They talked about Jethro as Taris. Right. In the Kano Chronicle, Kano Chronicle, which is in Hausa country, the leader of the Wangaras is called Zaga Iti, from Zaga, and the Wangarata are already mentioned in Zagar. So this is from an article called The Wangara and Old Sunni Diaspora. Another colonial administrator wrote the same thing earlier. Some of the people, quote, some of the peoples known as Mangara became the people we now know as, know as Mandingos, but the original Mangara, Wangara, mm -hmm. the subject people. Yes, that's what the Sunni, oh, I didn't say that, the Sunink and the Mandink were the same people. Wow. Mm. Sunni, Mandink, Malink, they're all the same people. That's, wow. Yeah. The subject peoples in the west of of the Ghana and Mali empires were without doubt, as the name implies, Gara or Garawan, as they are called in Fazan. As I told you today, there's still some of those people are still there, the Gara people. Did they give a description of these people? Or? The people are still there, yeah. They gave a description. The people, well, I've, I'll, I'll, hopefully there will be more description, but when therefore Leo Africanus spoke of the inhabitants of Wangara, speaking Hausa, he was not in error, as Barth thought. But the meaning is that the inhabitants of Castilla Lake, then called Wangara, spoke Hausa. Okay. So another reason why we don't, some people try to say that they're not, you know, they weren't Berbers is because of language differences. But people, as they moved, they adopted different languages. Correct. Yes. And so these people spoke, they probably spoke actually Nile Saharan dialects originally. Mm. And then when the Tuareg came in and certain other Berbers, black Berbers from the East African area, they brought in the Afro-Asiatic dialect called Hamasic or Amasic. And that was the original Amasic people or Masik people, Mazig people were the Tuareg, not, you know. That's now become a general name adopted by modern, modern North Africans who think right. that they're the 
their uh, <laughs> epitomize the Berbers, which they're not, the Tuareg are not even Berbers, how are they going to be Berbers? Okay. <laughs> okay, the Sonink also called Seracol, or it says, quote, the Sonink also called Seracoli, or Seracol, or Seracoli, are a mandate people who descend in part from the agricultural section of the Bafour and are closely related to the Imaraguan fishermen in Mauritania. They were the founders of the ancient empire of Ghana, circa 750 to 1240 CE. Subgroups of Sonic include the Maraca and Wangara. So this is from the Indiana University Edu site, okay? educational site. Okay, so here's the Gara people as they are today and as they were in the past. The Gara people, or Kara, ex extended to Arabia. And the other, there's still Kara people in Arabia. The name is spelled in the Bible, Korah. Uh, Kara. It, it was, it was you pronounce Kara. Kara. And it's spelled K-O-R-A-H, usually. Mm -hmm. So this is their, um, wait, which is this? Um, it's one of theirs. Oh, this is Garamont, the Garamontese area. Now the Garamontes are another people that they try to say were not black, but as you see they are um, almost mm. literally black. Mm. <clears throat> and they did, were described so by St. Isidore of Seville. Mm -hmm. Now do I have that in here? I don't know. But I, you know, I quoted some of the, the descriptions of the Gara and the Gai people, the Gawa people, mm -hmm. on my site. Isidore of Seville was in the 6th century AD and from Spain, Seville, Spain. And he said that the Garamantes were one of the Ethiopian races. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and also the uh, Hesperians, which was another name of the Moors. Okay, so the Gara origins were the Wangarawa or Jarawa Berbers. The, the main group of the Zanata Berbers were the Jarawa. That was the hugest, the largest group of the, of the uh, Zanata Berbers. All right, the original Garawan or Wangara Wakor. <coughs> We're related to the Dazagara, who I just showed you in the Fazan. Another name for them is Karain or Karain, Gorain. And this is the one that's probably related to the Karain of the Bible, the Hori, because they're mentioned with Ishban by medieval writers as coming from Canaan. And the Horites mm -hmm. were actually Canaanites. People don't understand when these African Americans talking about Esau and even being, you know, Europeans, whatever. The Bible says, and the, the Sephar Hayashar says that the Horites were actually Africans. They used the term Africans. Right. So that's a weird, that's a, that's a strange thing. Mm. The Esau and these leaders, these Horite leaders, or chiefs, were Dinhaba in Dinhaba, and they said that's in Africa. So I don't know what that means. Except that maybe they translated the word Africa from Ethiopia or something. Because that, you know, but. The whole point is that the Yemen is on the same plane as Lila and as Sudan, and um, that's what it was called actually for some Syrian writers, Lila and as Sudan. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Arabian Peninsula, and it was also called India Minor. Yeah. Okay. So the name Kara is likely connected to the Kara or Al Kara of Arabia, who were the people of also um, that were one of the tribes of Canaan in the, in the Mecca area. And I did that. I talk about that in my book in the book coming out. And it has the same spelling of Kara or Kora in the Torah. The Samaritan version has Kara, Kara like this. In the uh, King James, or I guess King James Lane, <laughs> has Kora, K-O-R-A-H. So, but the thing is, if you know anything about Saudi Arabia, it was occupied the, by the Menaeans, and the Menaeans were, according to the ancient Greeks, the word Minos came from the Minos. They were the people that settled there, yeah. And that they had a tribe called, um, the Minos had a tribe of, of actually of the Korain called Ra Raduman. Up until, maybe they're still there, I don't know. I know there were medieval epics too, but Radmanthus in Greek mythology was, you know, related to Minos. I think he was the son of 
son of Minos or something. But anyway, the Carians and the Menaeans, when they moved into Africa, also colonized the Mediterranean. So that's why you get a lot of the, uh, that's how you can get, as far as I'm concerned, early Greek civilization was largely influenced by those people. And that's what the Greeks said. So here's, again, the the Korain or Korain, or Tubal Korain, who are also located in, were also located in Jordan in colonial times, uh, members of the Hoatate Confederation. Um, so in the Bible it says, O holy Bama bore Jeush, Jalam, and Kara, Kara. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. You see how it all like, fits in together? I don't know yes. mm-hmm. And they're all trying to uh, claim the Canaanites were white, the Edomites were white. In Arabian tradition, Canaan, son of Rudah, the son of Rudamon, son of Naji, son of Morad, son of Madij, son of Hamdan, who I talked about as Hameda or the Hamathites. And the Madij, I have pictures of them on my Facebook page and on the blog spot everywhere. They're still black in Arabia. They live in southern Arabia. A lot of them are still black. The Madij are the ones that said, and the Tariq brought this up, Remember, Madij is uh, related to Hamdan, and it's Sanuria uh, and Ma'ad, or Madini, Ma'ad. Um, they said the <laughs> a fair skinned Arab is as, first of all, it's inconceivable. Wow. <laughs> Second, that it is rare as the seven, seven it's one of the seven world. wonders of the world. Mm-hmm. Wow. So Tariq is the one that brought that up and showed that Ibn um, Rabiha, Rabihu quotes a uh, Madij judge saying that. Okay. And they're still, like I said, they're still pretty much looking like Sudanic people. All right. Um, so I just wrote here some of the Torah connections where I know people are interested in that actually around the world. Um, so the, the Arab... Arabic writers, Ibn Qutayba, Wa Ibn Munabi, and other people that were Arabic speaking, wrote of Karan and Ishtar of Pazan, talking of them as, uh, or I think talking of Ishtar as Sudan, from Sudan, son of Canaan, because Sudan was considered a Canaanite, you know. And they had a tribe, like I said, named Sud, Al Sud, or um, Suad son of Aslam, who was Kina, was from the, from the uh, same tribe that the al Qaim were, were from and Mabella were from. So all these people were closely related. Kina people that originated among the Hamathites or Hamdan of Southern Arabia, the Meda of Southern Arabia. So if you have to know, your, if you don't know the Genesis thing, then you're not knowing your own history. Mm-hmm. So Hamathites and the Hamathites were the same people? Yes, the Hamathites were Hamdan, the Hamdan were also called Hameda. al tells us that and other people tell us that. Hameda. And they had the same, um, and, ha- and Tabari tells us that Ham- uh, Ithran and uh, what's it called, Badaran, and then ba- Badaran still, or Bidaran still occupy Arabia, next to near where Hamdan was. Actually, the Hamdan people still occupy Arabia. Um, Okay, so these people are all Horites, people of Esau and Edom. But at the same time, it says, these are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Hmm. So these Edomite people lived in Canaan. See? Medianite people lived in Canaan. Israelite people were from Canaan. From this area called Canaan, the Tahama area, and, or the Yemen, okay, which is south of Mecca. And they also lived around Mecca. But, you know, it's just you have to know, it's hard to just accept this kind of stuff if you don't know all of the details and anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I had to write that book. This book that's coming out. So these are all so north of these areas? In, the, in Arabia? In the area of... Um... Because right now I'm talking about the Arabian king. Well, yeah, the uh, Pazan, the Gara of Pazan, Yes, the Wangara and the 
Jarrah, the the Jarrah one. Don't have a complexion folks. Okay, I don't like that term olive complexion because when I think of olive, I think of green things and <laughs> I think of yellow green. I don't. I'm talking dark. Well, the oh, wait, dark. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm talking dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. dark. That's what I'm talking. And if you saw the people, the dark people, they're very dark. dark. <laughs> Just so if you don't like, I know you don't like to show black, but no, 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 it's not. Uh, what? To provide some clarification, <laughs> when Moorish Americans uh, use olives, they mean the full spectrum of olives. Because you, you can go now yeah, to the grocery store, they have black, you have black yeah, olives. Yeah, black olives. Yeah. So, was so we, he was using within that context to yeah. uh, differentiate from the uh, American socio-political yeah, connotations. If you tell, of the term if you tell an uh, American that. This person's all from Texas, they're going to think of an Italian. Yeah, anyone outside of more circles is going to think that. Yes. Right. So that's so why, I'm, to, that's why I'm not going to ever use back the and word forth depending upon the whole I mean, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they were not, you know, uh, they weren't all looking people as far as I'm concerned. They were. And this is black as a literal adjective. Uh -huh. These people literally. Almost completely black. Right. The guy are, are, these people are looking. These people are not. Brown, even they're they're black, and that's what the people in Arabia were describing a lot of times. They're black. Samar, Samar does not mean in the Arabic Bedouin tradition did not mean brown. It meant like near closer to black than that. Now, if I could, if I could actually take advantage of this part of the conversation, and plug. Mm -hmm. um, there, if, 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 if the watchers or the members of the attendees at this lecture. If you Google Ali's Ben Radio and you, uh -huh. and you put uh, uh, search Ali's Ben Radio and Dan Marnici, it'll bring up a, a show uh, where Sister Marnici was interviewed by Ali's men, Hassan Tuna Kael, uh, Brother Snow Bay, uh, Brother, I don't know that I not mentioned, Brother uh, Mahdi McCoyel, and uh, Brother Tuna Kael mentioned the same thing in that particular recording about the Ali, clarifying the use. Outside, since Marnisha has, since Marnisha has stated in the general understanding when you use the word olive, and brother, um, the Sada Tunica it clarifies the, the, way, the way that the Moorish Americans use the term olive, you know, keep considering the actual dark olives that are available. Um, and actually, in that, well, then, why don't we use the word um, melangiane then? Like, uh, <laughs> like, right. like this, eggplant colored. I because think that's more, you don't have to find many green, that, that, green eggplants, right? That's fair enough. He also mentioned, uh, Brother Tony Hill mentioned that his, his fondness of that, uh, that, that, that quote, uh, I forgot where the quote came from, if you can let us know, that a pal Arab, Palestinian Arab was uh, inconceivable or yeah, more was, rare than one of the seven wonders of the world. Yes, wow. that was from the 12th century Ibn Rabihu, Ibn Abd Rabihu of Cordoba. Ibn Abd. Abd Rabihu, yes. Thank you. Cordoba. Just yeah, actually, can I for one second? Mm -hmm. Look, what we, from what we see now, when do we see the migration or invasion or whichever language you want to use it of these people that we see in the Middle East now that claim that they were the people that were there? Oh, see that? That's a long story. That has to do a lot with slavery because the Arabs and the black people in the world took a lot of slaves. White slaves first. The white so slaves, right? A lot, like a lot of people don't want to recognize this because they want the narrative that, you know, we come from the people in the jungle and Tarzan, you know. But people in, in North Africa, the black people in North Africa, the black people in Arabia, take a lot of slaves. And the earliest slaves were the Syrians and the Persians and the Turks. And they brought in, especially a lot of Persians, they brought into mine in the Yemen and the Assyria area. And that's mm -hmm. where you have still, you still, I mean, after a time, they came in and kicked out a lot of the Arabs from the, from, from Sana and other, towns and that's why there was there's still conflict between I don't think it's all designed anyway so it's really well, done by design. Thank you. Well yeah. no I think it was the bad thing was that you know when you take slaves when you took slaves you're taking slaves and then your your children are coming out later and later in color and then Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's still designed. And then and then there's karma also you get hmm. back the karma that's correct. Right? Of what you did to other people. That's so right. Even I, I agree with you. Spain, that's right. Mm -hmm. Even in Spain, they took Slavic, they took, Slav they took mm -hmm. Franks, they took all kinds of you know different people. And mm -hmm. Pretty soon, the history. 
yeah. going up and up well, and up. Well, even the early, um, early Umayyad in Spain, they're, they're, some of their sons were blondish. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean. It's really deep. And it's, yeah, it's deep, but what is deeper is that, that how karma is such a, such a deep. <laughs> 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 but that's just Now, a lot of people would know history, right? But that's yes. Now it's coming back, yeah. yeah. And now we're trying to bring it back. I think we've, we've earned the right to, to know the history of what happened in the world. And that's why mm. it's being allowed back out. That's right. Because even when you're still a dungeon and all those people were writing, and you still, they, didn't still have, <coughs> they didn't have the foundation for saying that this happened. The Kushites, you know, they ruled the world and all this stuff. But now we do. Right. Now we're start, you know, you can go and see where people said these people are black and they, you well, see the skeletons well, and what they well, were. Well, the prophets say we got to do everything alone, so, you know. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's foremost. Yeah. Foremost. And that's, yeah. So no more slavery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. All right, Randy, let's see. That guy, makers of Sudanic civilization. Thank you. Wait, wait. Did I finish this? Uh, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that goes with that. Okay. So, yeah, Tabari calls them the Yashfin or Basman and the Bakran. So if you, you'll see in um in Berber tradition or lore, which is written down by the Arabs mainly, is Bar. <coughs> Bur al Batr, <coughs> Bur al Batr, and Bur al Bahrain. These are Ifran and Aran of of the Horites. Because in South Arabia, just like in Africa, the people prefix their names with Ba. So you have Bantu, Batusi, or Watusi, or something like that. So in Yemen, you have the same thing. You have many of the tribes still prefix their name with the Ba. So I don't know. People, nobody seems to want to talk about this stuff. But tie themselves to the land of that, of that area, pretty much. Hmm. To tie themselves to the area, to the land where they came from. The ba. Well, the what, name what is they the as a as a as a attached name. Um, to the location where they're from. No, I don't know what ba means though. Ba or wa in an African in Afroasiatic has to do with the. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means unless it's related to bar. Bar, you know, like the Yeah. Sorry. Where the tribe of, I don't know. Kara or and Koran are the names of those Daza I was showing you, these black camel riding people. Okay. Uh, the Kara are people in Southern Arabia today and also they were people among the Canaanites. The Kara and the Isa. And you find Kara and Isa in the both sides of the Red Sea today. Um, and but they what happened was when these people first left Yemen, they moved northward into the Hejaz and into Syria, and they also moved uh, across Africa and like I said, across the Mediterranean. That's why we have all these shared names and shared um, even shared deities, because mm -hmm. a lot of these names in the Bible are actually also African deities as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, you know, but another story. Let's see. Politics and society in Nigeria's middle belt. Says, remember, now remember, the, somebody else had linked the Yoruba with the, with the other groups of uh, the Kanuri. Mm -hmm. The Yoruba have, Yoruba have two different traditions of their origins. One was about Odudawa, who descended from heaven by a mystical chain to found the earth and become known as Al. Ile Ife. The other holds that Kisra and Nimrod, the ancestor of the Yoruba, migrated from the east, Persia or Yemen. During the migration, Nimrod died and his son Odudawa led the Yoruba people. Odudua and his group migrated, yeah, migrated southward. Obatala. Obatala. Yeah, they, well, let me finish this because I have something to say. <laughs> Southward to settle at Ife. Politics and society in Nigeria's middle belt dirt land. No, no, that's not Dalton. Well, that's from politics and society in Nigeria's middle belt. So Dirk Lang and Chik Anta Diop, they both talked about 
how the deities of um, like Oduduwa and other power and all those deities actually are known were known in the ancient Nile Valley as well as Akkad. Uh, mm. Dirk Lenz that emphasizes Akkad in Assyria. He believes that the West Africans or these people that have these traditions were actually under the rule of the Assyrians at one time. And the Assyrians, from what I understand, did invade southern Arabia or the Yemen. So before the time of Nebuchadnezzar, some of the Assyrians, um, you know, they, they were, uh, had made the Jewish people slaves. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the and the Hanaite people slaves in the in the end. Okay, so I say in fact the link between these areas is the Yemen or Arabian Peninsula. As such, they have a direct link to the Genesis figures. Odudawa is actually the Udadis of Josephus, who was supposed to be have crossed into who's Udadis according to Josephus occupied and settled in Western Ethiopia, meaning Western Africa, or Africa. Hmm. Um, and the, the Dan of the Torah, uh, and well anyway, this also is known as Titan, or, or Dedan in the Hebrew Bible. Um, but Titan, the Greek, in Greek mythology, come, comes from that word. Hmm. Um, and you also have talk in these Berber epics or African epics about Ad and the Adites mm -hmm. or, and Adidad um, and the Shadad and Hadad and all of these were actually gods also deities in um, Mesopotamia as well Hadad or Adad and Ad as well in the Yemen but today in the Yemen they are considered to be part of the folk folklore because I talked literally talked to a man of the Marad when I was working with you know, not with kind of poor Zahi Awas in uh, he was in University of Pennsylvania and um, he had this guy working with him who was from the Marad tribe of, of Southern Arabia and I had happened to know that the Marad tribe and he looked like a Sunnis. The Marad tribe was a Hamerite tribe I mentioned in Hamerite inscriptions and I was telling him, oh wow and I said, did you know that the uh, Berbers were said to have come from um, Hadan, uh, or not, not Hadan, but um, let me say, yeah, they have a myth coming with Hadan and the Adites from Southern Arabia in Yemen. And he said, oh, you know, we have that tradition of the fire, the fire of the mountain of Hadad, yes, we have that tradition. I'm like, what? Mm. You really are, you really are the true people. Mm. But, um, and then, um, that's when he mentioned this book called The Bible Came from Arabia. And I said, did you know such and such came from Arabia? And he's saying, well, according to this one guy named Kam Kamala Falibi, uh, everybody in Genesis actually came from the Yemen. Or wow. not the Yemen, but from Arabia. Wow. So, and, this, and I just laughed because I thought it was funny. But now I'm not laughing. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because not only were they from Arabia, but they were from the Yemen, and they were related to Africans and ancestral, many were ancestral to Africans. Mm. So it's important that we know the distinction between the Levant or modern Syria and the ancient Hebrews of that wrote the Bible, who were responsible for writing, writing the Old Testament and the Psalms and all that stuff. They were not from Syria or modern Syria. So the Delonke were another group, a uh, man-speaking group that occupied Kuda Delon. And the, that's where the Takori are, the, the Pula people, and they also have, you know, claims of coming from the further east. And in fact, some of them, oops, some of them were called Hudin, which is, of course, related to Hud and Yehud. And they were said to be Jewish as well. A lot of the full they or, or were traditionally considered Jewish, but, and you'll find that in, um, in Golden Ages of the War, Golden Age of the War, I wrote about that. Um, let's see. The Masi as well were the people that call themselves, still call themselves Gorma or Gordamanchi. Uh, and they're also connected, I think, to the Dogon, the Gordamanchi. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they still live in, uh, that's why the Dogon probably still, you know, I was, somebody told me the Dogon still call themselves Nabatians, or the Nabatians. So, 
Okay, so here is more sunny civilization. I think this is Gao. Gao, which is on the Niger. Niger. Or near the Niger River. Um, and bringing us back to Niger or Niger. So that word, the word Negro definitely comes from the word Niger. Or a Niger. I don't know how the word is pronounced, Negri or whatever. Uh, so that I like to bring up the um, what, something that one of the Moors found. I forget who it was. I, I can't remember who it was about the the Negro document of South Carolina because a lot of the uh, man people were brought to South Carolina and they talk about this legal. It's a legal document that says oh, we're not going to we're going to um, accept only the slaves as the ancient Berbers, mm -hmm. the Negroes. It says, connects the Negro, the word Negro with the ancient Berbers. Yeah, we broke that. Yeah. Yes. Who did it? We did. Who's we though? I, Ali's did man. You? Yes. <laughs> no, I wonder who found it though. That was like a... Yeah, we found it. And we put it yeah, on. Oh, so just everybody found it? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. I found it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're humble. That's nice. Praise the Lord. Okay, yes, praise the Lord. Um, yes, I just wrote that. So it's important to read actually Josephus too because he talks about who the, um, the Numidians and Moors actually being Getuls, who the Getuls were from. It says from Havila. Okay, the Havila were the people um, that were you know, related to the Christians but also the Sabians and other um, South Arabian people. They settled in Somalia and found in Zawila and in Fazan and became uh, Zawila and Zela. Okay, and also the word Walatin, another Berber capital, might also come from there, but I'm not sure yet. So in um, the Sefar Yahayashur, you'll, you'll see um, talk about it. Jaina or Jania. And the different people, the kings of Edom, called Zepho and um, of Ben Haba, and they talk. They say for say, for some reason they talk about Ben Haba being Africa, and um, these Edomite rulers are, are associated with Kitten, which is actually, um, you know, people believe Kitten was Crete, but in reality it was the name of, of um, Amalekites. A Malachite ruler named Katin, son of Madan in yeah. South Arabia. Yeah, and they um, are the ones that were supposed to have gone all over the world and founded different civilizations. But in the Mediterranean, especially, jo Josephus talks about that, the Kitan coming to the Mediterranean. And probably the, the name Kitama, one of the Berber tribes, one of the major Berber tribes might come from that, um, Kutama or Kitama might come from that word. Mm. So when they said the Ethiopians occupied all the coasts of, of um, Asia, they're talking about those people, you know, the, Kit the Kitten, Het, the sons of Het, Het. Hittites, actually, Ethiopians. Actually, the word Ethiopian is probably related somehow to Hittite too, because they have, you know, the early kings of, um, I think Abyssinia, but also South Arabia, they call themselves the Ethi, Ethi Amar, the prefix, the title of Ethi. Uh, and say, so did the uh, Songhai, Atta, mm -hmm. the Atta, Kartha. Anyway, let's see. So here I'm just talking about how Josephus said that, okay, the Gatuls or Gatuli were the most populous of the Libyan tribes in Strabo's time, which is the first century AD. Josephus, who lived around the same time, claimed that they came from the Eveloi of Cush or the people of ancient Aruna, which is an area of southern Yemen. And it's also the name of a, two areas called Kaolan. And the people that came from Kaolan, and when they moved north, they called themselves the Huwela. And they settled in Jordan and places like that. So we will also find them in um, the Persian Gulf as Huwela. So there was an ancient people called Jadala bin Wael that also lived in southern Arabia, which might be the root of that name, Jadala which was one of the Sanhaja tribes. Tadala or Getuli, 
Godala. And you and you'll find a certain basketball player, a basketball player from Africa, named Iguodala. Iguodala. Yeah, I think his name might be related because he's very tall, and the, some of the people of that area were Tuareg, who were, you know, Tuareg. Like I said, you know, um, when I say tall, I'm talking about giant tall, like black people tall. A lot of the, lot of the Tuareg mm. men were extremely tall, like over seven feet. And wow. they say that the the um, Ad, the Adites or the people in Arabia, the Ansar were, you know, eight, in the eight foot range. Mm. Some of them were in the eight foot range, the like giants. the Ubada bin Salman, yeah, the eight foot range, giant black people. And that's mm -hmm. where you get this tradition of the Philistines being, you know, giants and black. Mm -hmm. And Tuareg too, I didn't put it here, but I didn't talk about Tuareg in this lecture. But there are another main people that were called Moors. The Tuareg um, in, in the Jewish documents in Spain are called, usually called Philistines. When you talk about the Amoribi dynasty as the Philistine dynasty. Okay, see. Okay, so Havila is mentioned with Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Ibal, Abimelo, and Saba, Ophir, and Jobad, which is, these are all Southern Arabian uh, areas that can be proven, and it's in my book too. They're mentioned in, up until medieval times. The Ophir is a Southern Arabian uh, area too. So the Ethiopians of, of Ophir are talking about Arabia. So they immigrated to Zoawela in Somalia, also called Zela now. Uh, and the book of Joshua talks about the Bela and Balaam, son of Beor, who were in that area, Edom and Canaan. Um, see, am I mixing up things? Well, all of this is, you know, it would take actually the old day to explain that too, but. It's talking about what Joseph has said about the the um, Sophon, the the Sophaxians Sof coming over. Really re refers to the Zephoni who were up there in North Africa, and this Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, um, and it's very complicated. But the Amalekites are mentioned in Southern Arabia up until the colonial period. The Amalekites. Like I said, Katim was an Amalekite supposedly. Actually, the ruling caste of a lot of these people were, even the Israelite people, um, were supposed to be Amalekites. Like Moses was an Amalekite who didn't want to, you know, mix with a, with a, um, what do you call it? A Hamerite or Cushite, because she's called, the Fora is called Zarifa in, in Arabian documents, or Arabic documents. Zarifa al Hamyari, or Zarifa. Al-Himyari, because Cush and Himyar were the same people. Himyar or Humer was Hamor, the Canaanite. If you look in the Bible, you see Hamor, king of Canaan. So it's a shame because all, all this stuff is talking about, it's all talking about their ancestors. That's right. <laughs> and they're made into some kind of, you know, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Nonsense. You know? <laughs> um, so, so I have figured out, because of what people, the scholars have said about the Kia being the ancestors of the, the, the Gawa, or the um, the Kai, the Kai, <coughs> that this name, the Kia, which means pure, mm. is the same as the Kai of the Bible, which also means pure, wow. or purified. The Kai was one of the Judean people that were, or pure meat, pure meat too. One of the Judean um, peoples that were still left in in the Yemen or is Israel and brought back, you know, from Babylon. Um, but it's a whole. Let's see. They mentioned in Ezra 2:9 and in 2:23 and Sena. Sena is also mentioned not in the same passage with Zakai, as well as many other Judean people. Now Sena is where the Lemba of South Africa of uh, Southern Africa is going to be. You know the Lemba? Yes. Whose ge genetics actually found that the, the 
the Lemma in general, or the Abuba tribe, have more Kohan genes than the modern European Cohens, descendants of the Cohens. <laughs> so that's how, wow. yeah, so that tells you something. Could, no? could I add something to that really quick? Yeah. The, 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 when when, when um, Sasha mentions Cohen's, and, you know, Cohen genetics, it relates to the tribe of Levi, which is the family of Aaron, which is the royal priesthood from the Hebrew tradition. Right, right. That modern right. Hebrewists will say was lost with the destruction of Jerusalem right. and all the records in AD 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's almost scary, really. <laughs> I mean, it's almost scary. <laughs> All this stuff is coming out. Why is it just coming out now? Right. You know? It's got to come out. That's what's Yeah, good. it's got to come out. Time. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Judgment day. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. The Bella or Bali, like your Jehana and Cain, were, these are tribes. Jaina? Okay. So, in Berber tradition, there's Jaina and um, there's the Masis, there's different tribes that were said to come from King and relate to each other, including Harik and Harek, which is why the Greeks said that uh, the Moorish claim came from India with Hercules, because that all these names actually were related to the Moors or Afroasiatic people. Yeah. Um, let's see. So these were a clan of the Pila Hinderites who lived in, you know, like I said, the Hinderites were separating people, but they moved into Hejaz and, um, you know, northward as well. Um, some people claim that the Kuda is actually, Kuza here is actually the name of the Kuza, Kuza, another of the Arab, uh, Ansar people. Mm. So but I'm not sure about that, but that's what some writers make them the same. So Bella is, uh, let's see, I already talked about this. So anyway, Balaam, Balaam had a son in the um, Safar Hayashar, or Book of Jasher, called Jani, Jani. And this is you know, related to the Jehena, or Jaina, that's related to the uh, Wangara. So the name of the Ganawa people, or Ishnawan people, is supposed to come from this from this word Jaina. I only have it here. But um, Tariq is the one that pointed out that it's also related to the name Duhaina, which is the name of the Arab tribe. And that word is actually related to Gihon, the river Gihon in the, in the valley of Gihon. So, yeah. and, and she, if you look in the Safar, Safar, yeah, I mean, ha, ha, yeah, sure. Johnny is um, related to water somehow. You'll see the, the story about Johnny. Jania, the queen, related to water. So I personally believe that Gihan has some connection with this Jania of the Safar Ha Yashar. Um, but here in the. Oh, wait, why is he? Oh. So here is a Jaina, a son named Jaina, too? Okay. Anyway. So here's where Isidore of Seville writes that there are three tribes of Ethiopians, Hesperians, Garamantes, and Indians. Now if you go look back at colonial texts or even texts up until the 1980s, you'll see the Garamantes always described as white. Yeah. Just like the Hispanians and the <laughs> and, the, and the Moors. Well, anyway, and the and the um. Well, anyway, Hispanians were the Atlanteans. They were people of Atlas area where the Moors were, the Atlas Mountain area, which is in Morocco, in southern Morocco. So these Gara people. So here we go again. The same skin color, very dark. Not brown. A little dark in the room. <laughs> Occupied places like Garamez, Zawaga, and the Zakla Oasis, west of the Nile, and Garakrima, and the Wargla Oasis of the Mazab in Algeria. And that's where the Zaw kings claimed to have come from before settling in further south in Sudan. 
this, the, uh, so that's very interesting to me too, in Wardla. If you see Wardla, you'll see that there are also very dark still there in, in Central Algeria. And here is another people related to inhabitants of Wardla who are Zanata Berbers. They still speak the Zanata dialect as opposed to the Saharan dialect. Um, so these places that they inhabited in Central Ar Algeria and Northern Algeria were called Wardla, Gardea, Gadamis, uh, Tugurtia, and this is Tugurtia here. These are the Tegorarian um, Berbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the belt. I'm just showing here, let's just about to end here. I'm just showing here that the, um, these people were all associated, besides, okay, so I'll go back to the scholarship thing, but besides metallurgy and mining and trading, because they were the ones, the reason why they called it the golden trade of the Moors, because mm -hmm. they were involved in mining trading. They were also the artisans, basically, of these, of the Berbers, of the entire, you know, people called them the Berbers. I mean, the, the Tuareg never, the Tuareg were the other Berbers, but these were the people that did all the groundwork, literary groundwork, the agricultural work, and all that stuff. And there were client tribes often among the Tuareg, too. So you often see them dressing like the Tuareg. Mm -hmm. um, so they were the ones, like I said, they were the, became Jeanettes, known as Jeanettes, the Zanata, became the Jeanettes because of their horse culture. Now here's other more related people, the Kanan, more new. They have their horse culture. Very I like those. Very nice. <laughs> oh so yeah, well you nice see, they have mm -hmm. much better than that one. Jeez. Wow. This is a Hausa horseman. Um, and here, the, here's a Mossy, Mossy horseman. This is an older photo from the, I guess, the 19th century or, something, or early 20th painting. And here's a mossy, you know, mossy building there. Wow. You see, they're all building, they're all big, they're Masonic people, they're Masons. So mm -hmm. you have to keep the Masonic tradition alive, you know. Um, so I ended it there just because I thought I would talk too long. But the most important point apart from all this, the history, is that these people were the scholars mm. of Africa. Mm. And I mean, literally had, some of these families had libraries of books, you know, on science, arts, music, you know, astronomy, and also astrology, because that was a big, big deal to, the, to, the, to these people, and more in the, um, That's right. yeah, to the Africans, astrology, um, I don't care where you, actually where you go in Africa, that's the biggest thing, astronomy and astrology. Wow. You know, mm. it's very big in Africa. Mm. Um, and it's all related to Genesis and some of the earlier texts. And, and same thing in Hindu, in Hinduism, because I didn't go into all that because of course, that's a whole other part of the world, but there are people called um, Dravidians mm -hmm. that were actually also related to the Kushites that moved over there early on, and they brought um, the art of astronomy and the science of astronomy and, and astrology there. So all of my Indian friends, they, you know, they're always into astrology to the point where, you know, a lot of them, they don't get married without knowing right. that. Mm. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's very developed in, in the Hinduism now. See, but it becomes part of the culture, but you don't know originally where it came from. And, Benjamin of Tudela, I guess he was 11th century too, he talked about the Kushites. He said there were people called Kushites in Malabar, which is a Dravidian era, era that read the stars and planets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but the, the, and the thing today is a lot of people speak Dravidian, a lot of people, Dravidian have stayed here, but there are still people in Africa, in, uh, the Dravidian area, areas that are pinky haired mm -hmm. and who are closer to the original Dravidian people that came from Afro-Asia. And there are also, you know, there's also the ostrich type people over there and there's people from the um, Iranic area that moved in. So the Indians today are a mixture of people, but the Dravidians were not straight haired people like some African Americans had tried to say. They were, um, in fact, 
there's a YouTube video of somebody that showed that, that the Jordanians are saying, look, they're speaking in Central Africa, they're speaking our language, we can understand this language. Wow. So, mm. people always try to hide, you know, this mm. connection between this, this worldwide civilization that African-related peoples used to have, you know, Afro they had, they were, it was extended across to the Americas, of course, and across Asia and to, mm. into China because you have a lot of hangs there and a lot of myth, mythology about um, the black people that lived in their areas too. Right. So, but anyway, before, is there any questions? Any questions? It, it's, it's, it's really uh, it's really a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I have a couple. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, and in, a, in a particular part of, uh, of your um, presentation, I mean, most of the, the majority of the presentation is ethno history, mm -hmm. which is something that, uh, you know, when you're ignorant of the difference between that and, let's say, nationality, mm -hmm. it becomes confusing sometimes. Mm -hmm. There was a point where you were, I can't remember exactly where and what slide, where you were talking about the name of a particular group of people, and you said this is more of a nationality because it was a collection, there's a name. I think we're talking about the Arabs. Okay. Could you, from that perspective, could you explain the difference, because again, we're all lay people, the difference between nationality in terms of culture and, and ethnic history? Well, the thing is with nationality is it basically isn't a necessarily cultural Right. Homogen homogeneity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the nationality, different cultures can be involved. So Arab nationals, they can look different, they can be different cultures, even different religions. Mm -hmm. So, but when I speak of, you know, biologically related peoples, like these people are all biologically related, uh, I'm talking about more of an ethnic, or they used to use the term racial, but it's not really using the anthropology anymore. That's so, right. You know, yep. So ethnic connection. And the ethnic connection is important um, because of the cultural yes. connection. You, know? you belong mm -hmm. to a certain ethnicity and you belong to a certain. But the Arabs are not, um, even in, in Arabia, they, it seems like some of these people don't know each other. You know, The, the lighter skinned Arabs are they're like going around with cameras, taking pictures of the Dizani. Right. Black the Arabs, right. Right. like oh, I didn't know we had this. Right. You know, um, so, but and also from what I understand, a lot of them don't consider themselves like related to the early Arabs, so, mm -hmm. which is good because they weren't. Good <laughs> <laughs> That's so, right. But um, yeah. So, and you're talking about ancestor. Um, to me, the ancestor thing is very important, and and here's why because. The consciousness of your ancestors is passed down, right. and um, yeah, and influences culture, influences the kind of experiences that you have in your life, you know, and, and with people. So, um, and you can also, what what religion was supposed to do was to help um, elevate ancestral consciousness because ancestors do not. Die. This is more of an illusion than we think it is. Correct. Yeah, and <laughs> on the other side, it's actually more realer, you mm -hmm. know, than this. But some are not living. Um, I mean, some need help on the other side. Mm -hmm. So religion was supposed to help us channel the, the light of Allah and the grace, uh, so that we could help not just you know our descendants, but also our ancestors. Yeah, but that's not what they're using it for today, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. well, that's well, what we're using it for. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I say this is this is very this organization is very important in keeping alive the uh, traditions of these people, the Sufi mm -hmm. people, also you know Sufi Islam, Sufi Islam, yes. also closer to with, with the Moors, mm -hmm. with the Moors do, um, mm -hmm. which is you know mystical, more mystical. And that was always the difference between the African and the, you know other people, European people. With the dark skinned people, and the, mm -hmm. for some reason, the mystical tradition was always a lot more important. And most of the mystic traditions that are in Europe actually um, That's right. come from That's right. you know, the African and African yeah, exactly. people. That's right. So, uh, if we're not able to get the true meaning of our religion back, then we're never going to be able to raise, you know, your, yeah, and your people, mm -hmm. right. you know, our people, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
Yes, so to me, it's more important the spiritual aspect of this. And once you get yourself together, you can raise other people, right. you know? But right now, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're getting into this educational thing because I mean, I'm subbing in the schools and, and uh, the, the kids don't even want to hear about this stuff, mm. you know? All they want to talk about is what kind of cell phone you have. Well, that's, that's the education they're getting. That's the yeah. problem. That's not well, they're getting education. Getting, yeah, but they're getting it. No, that's not true. Now, look, I, I don't want to be mean. <laughs> no, you have to be mean. But listen, it is impossible to teach in today's schools because of the way the kids are being brought up. Oh, oh I understand. I understand. I, understand. Oh, I agree with parents, you. Parents, well, the, the problem is, first of all, we're having no parents. We're having kids out of wedlock. Um, and then, every time yeah. we say that, I <laughs> See, I think that was designed too, though. Whatever, if, if, even if it was designed that way, what I'm saying is we have to stop it. Right, we have to stop right. making excuses for no, not making excuses. all this. Yes, no, right. not, not you, but mm -hmm. the people in general, the leaders, keep making excuses. Of what we see, well, we see this on TV, we see this. Uh, that's designed too, though. We see, you know, we have guns coming into our room. We have, but you have to raise your kids not to go after the drugs and the guns right. and all that stuff, you know? And if you're not doing it's it like though. the Africans, like the Moors used to do it, then you're not going to be able to break That's right. That's right. That's right. No, that's that's right. correct. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you have to keep your, your kids under wraps because mm -hmm. it's, it's a war out there. Mm -hmm. It's a war against your kids. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to say, oh, you know, they didn't do this for me, did this to me, when there's a war against your kids? You can't do it. We can't afford that. You know? But that's a fact. Go ahead, brother. Uh, yeah. um, oh. You said, oh, go ahead. You said the Yoruba. Igbo had Judeo practices? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they come, and they consider themselves to be, uh, yeah, it's the real Hebrews. Some of them say, yeah, well, we're the real Hebrews, Hebrews, not those people. I, I just, Which, I, 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 sorry to put you on my my, my wife's uh, father, he's from um, Nigeria. He's, he's from like the smallest tribe, but the Bibio. Oh, the Bibio, yeah. Video, yeah. So, but it's funny to me because when I, with my Nigerian friends, all the ones I grew up with, they're all Muslim. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. My wife's family, they're all um, Christian. Chris Catholic. Oh, oh yeah, right. They're yeah. Like, they Catholic. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm trying, it's funny to me because I'm trying to see maybe even between the two sides, there's certain um, uh, well, clan, I guess, traditions that they may practice outside of Catholicism all. Uh, uh, now, today's traditional Islamic tradition that they're probably practicing a break or a, yeah. a, a yeah, there are, there are some practice. There are some Jews that, you know, that, that practice the Judaism, but mostly um, Nigerians, especially in the you know, northern part of Nigeria and the Sahel areas are Muslim, but the, the, the point what I was trying to make is, or what people should know is that before they became Muslim, a lot of these people were considered themselves um, from Israel, mm -hmm. rather than <laughs> That's right. yeah, from Israel or the, uh, in, in fact, the Jews, you know, from let's say from Aaron and Levites. So just like the Lemba, they still claim to be Aaron, and then it turns out that they are. The gene, they have the genes of the Levitic people more than the. European uh, Kohans do. And they don't even consider themselves Kohans, they're just really African Jews, you know. And the fact that they knew about Sena, though, which is in Hajamaut with the other, those other places I mentioned, a lot of those, um, that was, a, that was a, that was where Israel was, you know. That was where Israel was, but that's also the stronghold. Most of the, up until the 14th century, most Jews were in, in Southern Arabia. That's what Benjamin Tudela said. That's right. Most of the Hebrews were in Southern Arabia. And up until? Not the Levant. I think Benjamin Tudela. Tudela? Oops. <laughs> was from, I think he was in the um, 11th century. I know with the centuries, things, things keep changing, you know, also. It's, it's time. Oops. Moves far away from the original, it, it keeps changing. Um, what do you mean? Why not? In other words, all right, if we go back to the beginning, right? A lot of things done change from the beginning to where we're at now. Yeah. Which, which is hidden. 
Well, what kind of things are you talking about? Then? Oh, so me. Uh, 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 get, uh, all right, just like all right, like you say, certain fries. Like you say, certain fries, right? Yeah. Certain fries come from other fries. Yes. yes. But they they don't relate themselves to these other fries from the beginning because they don't know they lost they lost contact oh, yeah, with each that's other. True. That's, that's true. That's true. Yeah, they don't get along. A lot of right. them don't get along. A lot of these people like the Trelawney don't get along with certain men. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. True. I mean, we all want it. We don't get along with each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't get along as individuals, yeah. Yeah, right. individuals. but we all want. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, it's definitely connected some dots for me and my own family. Because uh, many of my uncles, they're like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and they're all oh, cowboys. Wow. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my uncles, his, his name is Zumi. And no one in the family knows the origin of his name, but when we do it, when I'm doing the ancestral DNA, we see I see three or four zoomies in the line, so it's a name that's been passed down. But they're all horsemen. <clears throat> but the other thing is this tradition of some of the tribes that said we were ran out of Canaan by Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Prophet Noble Dralik teaches that as well. Mm -hmm. So my interest is if we can identify those tribes that have that same tradition. We can well, probably get, Joshua, we can do, not only do comparative analysis of what our teachers are and what theirs are, but also just gain more insight into those people that share no, the same tradition. Joshua refers to the Amalekite or Ephraimite peoples. So those are the whole people, this whole Amalekite peoples that were, get, you know, were kept harassing the Kenite peoples, Kenite and the you know, Hamite, Hamite, Hamite peoples. So you have Shem, those are Shem. And you know, the hand. We had mixture, mixtures of these different peoples. Even in Arabia, you had that before. But now, Africans are mixture between the, the Shemrites, Shemrites, mm -hmm. or the Shem Shemron, because Shemron meant you know the the protectors of the client tribes. The client tribes were Hamron, who tended the fields, or tended the land, and the, vine, and the vines. That's where that comes from. That that allegory of Ham and Shem. Um, now, yeah, the Ephraimites and Ephrathites are related to the Torah. They still call themselves the Ephraim. Yeah, I was referring to that tradition of Joshua being Noon having run. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people out of Canaan and they fled west. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> well, they fled, they fled west oh, as well. Time. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> the Ephraimites and all those Amalekite people, remember, they remember. The tradition also is that they also come from, uh, brought, they were the Mizraim that came into North Africa. Right. That, the word Mizrata is still a foreign name. The word Mizraim actually came from the Hyksos people that came into, um, or I don't even know if the Torah were Hyksos, but these Amalekite people, the Kathim, like I was talking about, that settled along the coast. In fact, I even have on my blog spot um, how somebody, one of the, um, I don't know if it's Strabo or somebody talked about the tall people that came into North to Africa, to North Africa, the giants that came into North Africa. Yeah. And I have it on my blog spot, I can't remember one. But, um, yeah, so both the Amalekite Philistine type people or Anakim occupied Canaan, Canaan with the, the agricultural. Um, people, Hamathites and all these, Kenites and all these people who were also the priest caste. So, so the Jews, the original Judeans, the Buddha, came from the Kenite people who worshiped worship Yahweh. The Kenite, the real Kenites or al people they found worship Yahweh. They, they have found that. You know, the, the Arabian al people of the Buddha uh, worshiped Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So they just didn't know that al Qaim comes from, the, the Kuda comes from mm -hmm. South Arabia. Mm -hmm. you know, and they also came from Africa. Right. So the valley of the Kuda are, are described as Parain bin Valley. Okay, Ephraim, they're talking about Ephraim and the, and the valley tribes um, among the Sulaim. Okay, Sulaim bin Mansur, who is, who is Shalom, or this, or, um, the names related to Solomon, but Mansur and Selim were closely connected to Shalom and Manessa. So, but I talk about that in the blog, but 
under uh, in the King Solomon's Miners post maybe. King Solomon's Miners post. But these people came in together too. It seems like a lot of them were together in Arabia and they came in together. That's why you find them together. Um, the Fari have some high vassal caste and they're the smiths of the um, of the Tuareg people. And they probably went into Sazia. That's why you find the what's his name? Abu Bakr. This painting of the Abu Bakr, the first the Lam Tuna. Yes. Very black, you know. That's likely that's likely he's more Samhita than Tuareg. I have a so, question. I have a question, Sister Marnish. I just want to make sure I didn't clip the answer to the last question. Oh no. Okay. I have a couple of that I wrote down, but I, but I wanted to ask this one first um, and let the Moors get in any other questions that they may have. So this is uh, coming from the, um, uh, the David McRitchie's book, Ancient Modern Brightness. This is volume one. He's talking about group of people in, um, in the British Isles. Uh, I think it's something like 1700 BC era. The Picts? Called the, the D8... I always pronounce it Dem Nani. Is how it. Yeah, the Danaeans. Or the Danaeans. 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 That's how you. Well, no, that's how I pronounce it. But um, no, people thought that they were connected to the Firbold, or the, the Firbold were connected to um, Danaeans. But I, I'm not sure if that's what you know. If that's uh, the Danaeans, just means Adnan, Adnan, the people of Adnan. In South Arabia, mm -hmm. people of Mad, Mad, and Adnan, and they became the names in Greek mythology, and then probably in Irish mythology, and not even in Hindu mythology. On the fifty names, fifty um, Dinavas, Dinavas. Mm. So um, yes, it's hard to talk when you're talking about mythology, but mm, it's possible. Yeah, he describes them. He says that um, he describes uh, they they they. One uh, statement says they supposedly occupied the island of uh, Silora, whose inhabitants preserved the ancient manners, reject money, barter merchandise, value what they required by exchange rather than by price, worship the gods, and both men and women profess a knowledge of the future. Hmm. That's how they're described. Well, I do remember seeing a uh, sculpture of a Silurian. That's what you said, S I L U R I A N? Yes. Yeah, that, well. I know they definitely had some Silurian uh, a sculpture that looked like African, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they, That's they, weird. Yeah, they were describing, and it doesn't say it in this particular one, they repeat that description a couple of times in this particular passage, talking about the British Isles, early inhabitants of the British Isles, and then later on they were a fixture in the, uh, the, the rise of whatever civilization after that in Britain, but then they were at some point... Uh, ex you know, I don't know if it was a genocide or they, they were gone, they were taken out of the culture. Um, describe them as wearing all black, covered heads, and got like flowing garb that went down hmm. due to their feet in several of the other passages. Oh, okay. Which that sounds, sounds interesting. Like or yeah. I, gotta find, I gotta find that article. But they say the original Brits were black. Yeah. This, they had this, article on it. this is the that group. Right. It's so closely connected to Iberians, and then later on it's talking about it talks about uh Druidus uh Druidus uh uh, a school that was also extinguished in some type of a uh, genocide moment, if you will, or some type of, uh, you know, they were they were exterminated. Well, all I know is that when I first started studying the, um, like the, what physical anthropologists were saying about the skeletons around Stonehenge and stuff like that, I mean, they always connected them with the Africans, you know, even though they used to call them Caucasoid Africans, like the Somali. <laughs> Those people, the garment is, is that where that word comes from? You got garment? Garment? So, mm, I don't think so. That's is there a connection there? That's no. something mm -hmm. that I, when I hear about um, ancient civilizations, you know, they always talk about us being very well dressed. Very well. And I see blue. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was well, up. So I just when I saw what, it looked like garment. So. The ancient Romans said that the um, yeah don't the, the Numidians and Amori they didn't they had they wore gold they always polished their teeth and curled their hair with hot irons and <laughs> um, 
They didn't like to be touched. They don't like their hair to be touched. <laughs> wow. They said that. I thought I think I had that in my book. To this day. So I saw you drawing correspondences uh, when I first heard the music of Tina Irene and being a uh -huh. blues aficionado, I immediately uh, yeah, record connected yeah. the melodies mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, so I'm thinking that you've been posting lately yeah. uh, the desert blues and mm -hmm. it, and if you compare it to the uh, Mississippi Delta blues, oh, you, yes, it you would have them singing yeah. those same melodies. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's right. good. Yeah, but a lot of the, the Torah sometimes they borrow from the uh, Mandy Kasoni people. Gotcha. So that that man sound, that's the man sound that you hear in the, in the blues, you know, they're in their blues. So they also have a different kind of um, songs, it's a different kind of style of music that they have. It sounds different from the Amalekite music. I don't know. Okay. But um, yeah, the, the Sonic um, are the ones that are the musicians of that of that area. Where the musicians, the Kora people, you know, the people that play the Kora, which is a beautiful instrument. And, yeah. And then they even influenced the um, you know, the British Isles. Music of the British Isles, because they used to bring them in. Mm -hmm. Aristocrats used to bring them in. That's where the term <coughs> Amores came from, bringing them in to play music and stuff. Well, it's what I'm saying. With, with the music, everything, we would have begun it, but we wiped out the whole picture. They don't talk about it. Oh, yeah. They, they reversed everything. Yeah, well, even that, that even happened with jazz recently. Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> the one we want to go there. In Europe, they, apparently they're claiming jazz was there in school. I mean, they're doing that in, every, in everyday life, they're doing that with music. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of it's because a lot of us don't want to appreciate Well, we don't music. know. I, I, I don't know. know. Yeah. Our yeah. young people don't even know where the music came from. Or what music is. Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 Seriously. Right, 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 right. But people try to blame the young people. Yeah, sure. Yeah, going back, what you said, going back to what you said before, you summed it all up because they not getting it from mm -hmm. the essence of where they come from. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother don't teach me about James Brown or Al <laughs> and nothing. But, but, and I'm going to society and I'm letting somebody plant in a car mm -hmm. and I'm 50 years old already. People 50 years old don't even know who Sam Cooke is. Right. 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 right now. Yeah. Uh, you play, what is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I'm <laughs> well, too, too busy watching Maury Povich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's real. 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 That's you know, color as relates to descriptive of skin tone, right? Mm -hmm. But you used norms, you know, the, the, the norms that were the norms in that society at that time, which is totally foreign to us. And what happens with us a lot of times is that we'll read those and apply our modern ideas mm -hmm. to those concepts. So when we hear, like you mentioned, a particular group of Afro-Asian people that refer to themselves as white, yeah. but it had nothing exactly. to do with pale skin. Yeah, Could yeah. you address that? Yeah, that's a good question. The uh, mm -hmm. Sonic um, Ongara peoples in manuscripts are often described as white. So, you know, the Europeans, of course, being European, they came down and, <laughs> and looked, you know, found all these things where they're talking about white this, white that, and they said, oh, the, the rulers of these societies were all white. Yeah. You know, but in their culture, the, especially the Muslim culture that they have, that's what white means actually, as opposed to pagan. You know, it means not. They consider you know pagan yeah. means to be ignoble or lower than Muslim. Yeah. You know? So it's just a. And then the black were just black were just the, um, you know, regular the Africans that were not converted to Islam, but. Wow. And then you find the, the Tuareg using it for, or not the Tuareg, but the other um, people that came into Africa using it for the Sonic and Marka and Rangara who used it for, who used, used it, call themselves white. Yeah. But the other people, like, and then the Europeans started calling them black and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so it, it changed. It, that's 
one of the distortions that um, has happened where now black people don't have a history. Uh, even the Garamantes, you know, were considered white. If you look at Diop's book, you know, the African Origin of Civilization, he talks mm. about how you know, they even go into the heart of Africa and make <laughs> the Garamantes white. Mm. So, wow. wow. And it's true. And, and mm. when you go to um, look up the Ethiopians, you know, the Abyssinians and Eritreans and before 1980s books, you'll always, always see them called Caucasians mm -hmm. or Caucasians. Oh, well, I know. That's the oldest I do. Because yeah. yeah. when I looked at, uh, like when we say uh, uh, Africa is a land, Africa had, had different people, different tribes. Mm -hmm. But then c complexion wasn't in there. But they added complexion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just two complexes, either white or black. Uh, in the middle, so you know, it, it's, it's confusing. Well, n the reason why they talk about complexion is so that they can say, or used to be, so they could say that the black people didn't were given civilization by white, fair skinned people. Oh, that's that's, 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 that's that's what's going on. So, you yeah. know, it's just business and politics. Yeah, that was a political thing, and like I said, there was a reason for it. But now mm -hmm. that's, that should be over, you know, it's going to be. Right. But, if, but if, if you know it, it frees you. Yeah, but most people don't. But that's the <laughs> problem. Like I say, I mean, our kids in school are not, they have no sense of self whatsoever anymore. Mm -hmm. no, they don't know what, they're just, I don't know what to say. But there's I mean, nobody it's, really it's guiding them. Cause, uh, sums it up. The younger people, <laughs> the older people are not <laughs> telling them about anything. Sums. But they will listen to all the people, <coughs> the people tell them that. Young people uh, listen to listen. People. You know what? Well, I did. I did start talking about the Moors once, and and all of a sudden they got quiet. And we're like, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, uh, they will listen. The young people will. But the well, older people. This is not great. Exactly. But, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. But you know, then I put up different things in the room with black civilization, culture like that. But they didn't seem inter too interested in that. But I think it. Schools did more of that, you know, right, putting right. African, yeah. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. civilizations, because, <coughs> excuse me, it took me years to even know that all these different stone built mm -hmm. towns, these hundreds of stone built towns even existed in Africa. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. Well, we got Black no. History Month, so <laughs> we all right. <laughs> No, no, but we still. Uh, this is oh. this is still black. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you making a joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they give us from the 1600s oh. up. Oh. Nothing well, going back. From oh. Harry oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but nothing <laughs> going back. You know, they don't go back. Yeah. 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 Mr. Monici, I, I want. I had a question. Segwaying on Brother Lawrence Bay's uh, statement uh, just now. Um, in the description, um, it, it, you have uh, historical people. Mm -hmm. that are described from historians and different sources that are sometimes later, uh, 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 sometimes, you know, much later. Uh, and in, in those descriptions, a lot of times you'll see the terms, like I think of, um, there's multiple groups that you've mentioned over the years uh, mm -hmm. and during, throughout the lecture, described as, quote, black. Um, and I wanted to see just, the, uh, uh, just a rough, give from you a rough feel how often that is a description that is um, embedded in the statement of the people themselves or the people that are recording them, that are the historians that are actually making these statements about these historic people that are the source. Oh, and because I know a lot of times there's a, you know, in describing people of African descent, people of dark complexion, you know, you have to kind of somehow describe them in a way. And black is sometimes a useful way to this, say, I, I usually say African American or I, I have African descent mm -hmm. or dark complexion. Mm -hmm. um, is the term a way to uh, kind of be clear on what, you know, uh, a phenotype and uh, a, a, a ethnic, a ethnicity, if you will? Um, and that would be secondary to the question that is it the people that use the term or the, just the, uh, the sources? That we are that we use to prove well, that these people were of that ethnotype. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the people don't use the term to describe themselves. They don't even call themselves, Af you know, they wouldn't even call themselves African. They would call themselves by their particular people. Yeah. Okay. So, but when certain pe peoples came into conflict or into into um, contact, you know, and they're different. Like I have, I'm in school in African Rose. 
uh, IFEC or IBO and um, something else, but um, yeah. That's so what that, my, my, my father-in-law speaks, EFEC. Oh, okay, EFEC. Yeah. Well, what they yeah, know, but, what do they know? No, they, they just, they just know because, what you're no, but, about? no, they just know that um, in terms of where they live, there's always been this conflict between herders and the nomads. Mm. Yeah, so you'll find the same descriptions of that um, white people give to us. You'll find Fulani given to the Sonic, and you'll find mm. you know, the different tribes calling themselves names that are not. <laughs> that are very same. derogatory that same you know because we've heard we've heard description like uh many of them and it seems like they're coming from european sources but uh, right. black is, is, is dirt the black is lava right, right. in some well, cases right. well yeah well in many cases black is lava because black that's what they lava. were yeah mm -hmm. that's what they consider them and just like when the when the um africans went up to Europe, you know, they had their descriptions of the European people, like, like, uh, you no, know, I like cats and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, but, but they not, they had to describe what's different, what was different. What was different. Them. Yeah. But something that was very, you know, Sister Dana mentioned in another presentation that I heard her speak on, the, um, the original Arabians okay. would say that. Oh, yeah. With Original pride, always said mm -hmm. they would say that with yeah. pride, and then later the social dynamic changed, where it became that description became derogatory. Yeah, by that, right. yeah there was a saying in the um, in the Arab tradition, in the Arabian tradition, about you know, God loves both the blacks and the reds or the whites. You know? Yeah, mm. meaning the Arabs who are the blacks and the. Oh, your wife goes on the day too. Yeah. <coughs> so, but they always call themselves black, the blacks. Yeah. I think the so. pivotal part of to, to, uh, Brother Sharif's statement is that describing well, thorough melanation and describing the absolute color, you know, is where kind of like with, this, with the connotations of the color and then the description well, of someone who's well melanated. Well, what I think is that we have to take in the context of what happened in America, where you know Americans. Right believed, the way Americans believed and the Europeans believed that the color black meant something derogatory. So in the, in those cultures, the color black means evil, yeah, it right. means the, the devil, it means ugliness, you know, it means everything. Well, that's but in, in, the, that's in, in their the, books. Yeah. But They're because, and, and it came actually because the Moors, when they came up there, they said, oh, they said, oh black is the devil. Because the devil. No, I think we were taught that. They were taught that? Yeah, they were taught that. Who? Uh, who? The European? Uh-huh. Uh, who? They. <laughs> they. That's what I'm saying. They told us that. But we don't know who they is. No, no, no. What I'm saying is in their <laughs> tradition, in their in the European tradition, they have, you know, yeah, they have the same books, literature. They yeah, talk but they about got pride in themselves, but they don't give us pride. But they're always giving themselves and, pride. And which doesn't matter, right? Because it weren't, that's men. This is no. But what I'm saying is, Back in that time, they didn't. They they considered black to be bad. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yes, and that wasn't had nothing to do with us. That just was. You know. But they were at war with the Moors. So you have to understand. Well, I understand. The Moors considered them barbarians, and you yeah. know, treated them like barbarians too. Remember the the pictures of the German um, Moor, the Moors and wild men. So they called mm -hmm. them the wild men. They called them. That's right. You know. Mm. I think also too it's the it's the I think a lot of the description comes from the the encounters based on conflict too because I think yeah. if I was a European in like the seven hundreds and I seen like these <laughs> big old <laughs> right, right. elephants right. and right. mastodons right. with like seven foot right. spears and armor I mean like. <laughs> that was coming. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. over. But you make the brother, 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 you know what I'm saying? You make a huge listen, point. Or, yes, right. Exactly. Uh -huh. Now, I was going to say, the, the Ansar that went into Italy, like I was at a, um, I don't think, no, you guys didn't make it. But in Philadelphia, one of the first lectures I did, there was a lady there from Italy, and she said her father used to talk about the, these are the Saracen giant houses of black, mm -hmm. of the black Saracen women. They, they were giants. Mm -hmm. They came into Sicily. They were the Ansar, right? They came into um, southern France. The, the people that fought against Charlemagne were Azd Arabs, people of giant 
they were at Ansar and people of giant um, appearance mm -hmm. for physique. Mm -hmm. And not just the tall Watusi type, but big, massive body. And I know what they wrote about was true because I've seen with my own eyes some mm -hmm. of these people. <laughs> They're like twice the size of you. Mm. It makes sense to the pictures too when they show like the, the I guess show sometimes more is like sitting down with the book and they and they and then you see it's like little like but to your point and to and to, to Sister Dana Manichi's response to your point is very powerful because in the in the philosophy of warfare, right? Nowadays, it's called psychological operations and psyops, right? Yeah. The primary of the, 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 the primary strategy is to dehumanize the adversary. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Is to dehumanize, That's right. right? And so, and then, and, you know, and Professor Dana Marnici spoke about the fact that we already know in this movement that there was a war against the Moors, right? Yeah. right? The, 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 the escalation of the transatlantic slave trade, as we all know historically, was a result of our defeat at Granada. Right. That being said, what we see today with today's modern racism is an institutionalized right. version of That's right. the dehumanization of the adversary right. of our forefathers. Right. And I think I wrote something about that in the field last yeah. one. Yes, I Yes. Yeah, because um, yeah, so that was the thing. There was the Barbary corsairs were going around. Um, you know they were, yeah, the pirates That's that right. were kidnapping, <laughs> kidnapping the um, European, yeah, American, American ships that were trying to trade in the region. Yeah, they never you know, and then, why he needed to find an alternate trade route? Excuse me. Well, 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 <laughs> no, but um. And they even wrote down, you know, well, we have to do this. We have to make them, you know, do what they did to us. Wow. So, you know, with, what's his name? Who's that? Who's those Moroccan, um, Moroccan uh, sultans? Mullah Ishmael, I believe. Idris Aluma and Mullah Ishmael and all those mm -hmm. who, who Shakespeare even wrote about, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said the more the more al Bakazar, um, talking about how they were black. Black and stuff. There's a um, book to that point written by um, Ray Irwin, I R W I N. The book is called The Diplomatic Relations Between the United States and the Barbary Powers from 1776 to 1816. On Powerful <laughs> book because this book documents exactly what she's saying about how we, our forefathers, in enslaving Europeans, in some cases, Depopulated entire islands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the fact. Mm -hmm. What happened to us was retribution. Mm -hmm. Right. We did it first. Right. Mm -hmm. We did it first. It's always right because how could how could you enslave these big people? Yeah. These big powerful people if it wasn't ordained or it happened. Well, I want, I want to take maybe one or two more questions. I, I want to thank Sister Monichi for a time. We don't want to burn her out. The most we, you know, we got I got a long list of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, you, frame, you, right? you wouldn't be able to burn me out with that. I'm, not, I'm like Tamlin, so you didn't even just. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll let Sharif, I think Sharif was too much more detail. Next week. Maybe two more. Me. Maybe two more questions. And now, if anyone didn't get a chance to ask a question, you want to oh, ask yeah. now for everyone to be <laughs> I, I was going to ask, uh, you had mentioned a group of people um, uh, called the Z Z Z Zakai. Yeah, they're the Zagawa, Zakai, yeah. Songhai. And uh, I would say, people. I would first, as a disclaimer, kind of, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat novice to this. I was going to say something at the beginning about being a, a student and a teacher. You got to humble yourself to someone who knows. Uh, the name, that, that particular tribe brought to my memory immediately. Uh, Zaghai as biblical Zakai is what you had in the slide. Right, right. Made me think of a, a Moorish um, ruler called Az Zagal. Zagal. Who was in Spain well, and who sold uh, in the late era of Spain, sold, sold the kingdom for, what was it, $2 million? $17 million. 17 million. $17 million. Mm. And then he, exiled, he got exiled into Africa, ended up in, uh, they took his money from him and put his <laughs> eyes out. Eyes out. Yeah. And I was trying to, uh, 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 if you draw the connection to the brother, if, if there's a connection to this group of people that you were mentioning, the biblical Zakai. Well, that's, somehow, yes, I was, yeah, that's why I wrote it up. I was saying that the Zakai probably got their name from those people, yeah. Okay. 
because the Zakai were related to certain other Judean people who were also in Africa, the Korah, the other Levite peoples. Okay. But that's why I say it's, it's, it's hard to do without the Bible. If you, if you look at the Genesis and see how all these people are named, like the Horites are all named Don't together. Where, you, you, right? said, you said something similar with Ham earlier, too. You said that's where, the, that's where Ham's name came from. You were talking about a group yes. of people as well. From a, sound like an earlier time than the yeah. ancient Canaanite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> from the Ham... Hamathites, and, and the Hamathites are those people. I mean, that's that's the English word for the Hameda, or the Hamdan. Yes. Right. Yeah. The Hamathites would have gotten their name from Ham, or Ham was named after this. Group well, people. in the in the Torah, it's in fact Lord Abba is the one that brought that to my attention again. That the, the Ham is called Hamath, or Hamath is called Ham. Some, it's somewhere there. I mean, I can look it up. But yeah, it says that Ham was Ham, Ham, Hamath. These children of Ham were Hamath. So apparently, see, because in Arabian tradition, they don't have the tradition of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. They just say they all came from Shem. Mm -hmm. Ham, Ham, and Hamath. Wow. Came from Shem. Right. Yeah. Who, who's the tradition? And wow. Javan, the Arabian tradition. And Javan wow. and the, the other, you know, the, the Japhethites. Yeah, um, they don't have all that. Bro, bro, Brother Wesley Muhammad does some really. Powerful research, and he has a book called uh, The Book of God, uh, Encyclopedia of Proof That a Black Man is God. Earlier, it was when he was going under true Islam, but he connects uh, Ham in that book amongst a lot of other very interesting research that he did. He connects Ham to, to be an ancient European god, uh, and Ham and Zeus. Have gods. No, the Europeans didn't have gods. Yes, it, it, well, you're saying, yes, Zeus He's, Ammon came from, yeah, Yahweh. He says Zeus yeah, was yeah, actually yeah. none other than Ham yes. in his, in his oh, research, okay. which was pretty True. interesting. True. Which is the reason why that line of question about which one, the Hamatites in relation Apollo to Ham is... Kameus, Apollo, Kameus, Baal, Haman, yes. There's, there's a lot of connections there, but that's because, like I said, they, these people moved into Europe and brought their traditions yeah. with them, yes. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah. Okay, you like a break. You got one, Two Maybe questions. I see brother, I'm going to recognize oh, brother yeah. Tunica oh. Ill, and then I see the brother in the back, and that's it. Yeah. Brother okay. Tunica well, A brief, uh, I guess, uh, historical synopsis of, of who the Moabites were, specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah, I meant to address that question, because I get that question a lot, and I want to address it from a historical and academic perspective. Okay. So the Moabites were a, a people that lived in Moab. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Moab, there's a Moab in, in up near, um, not, not even Moab, but, but there's the Moab, Moahi people first founded Moab in Hajimel, okay? But these people are called Manaeans, or Ma'in. The Ma'in also founded Oman, or Amman. And that's also why the Bible talks about Ammonites, and calls mm -hmm. Ammon and the Manaeans, you know, the twins. So the Manaeans were, I mean, the Ammonites were a group of the Manaeans. The Manaeans and the Sabans were actually just the remnant peoples, um, I would say, uh, of the Canaanites. But they were actually just one of the, you know, each were one of the Canaanite peoples. The, the Mayan, um, that, that, that was also a city. That's, that's also a city. In that's where that name comes from. So it's more of an archaeological name. Mm. <coughs> and, but, but you do have no, no. Well, it's based on the towns. Oh, okay. the towns. So Moab and Mayan and Amman were all, you know, inhabited by the same people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to get a grasp. You just have to know the geography and the, mm -hmm. you know, and the even in the Bible it talks about the Ma, the. Um, Maonians, Ma 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 they call them Maonians somewhere, um, and say they were related to the Ammonites. Yeah. Um, please. Please. Wait, wait. But anyway, I, yeah, so that my new, in this new book, I go into that too. Okay. Like, in detail and with the, the uh, bibliography resources, with the source of that information. Well, it was supposed to be in December, but now it's because I got my picture in late. It's supposed to be like next month. 
Can you give the boys the name of the book and we'll go to Sharif? Sharif, you got something uh, brief because Brother um, Barnaby Bay has the last question. Oh, I was just going to make a statement that you see the excitement in the members, right? Because you arm in everybody. It's not like that. That's right. Can, can you give us the name of the I want, book? I want everybody. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, well, the, he named it, which I don't like the same, the African. The African and Arabian origins of the Hebrew Bible. I think mm -hmm. that's a pretty good title. But that's, I mean, my subtitle was, I like my subtitle. I can't okay. remember the second one. That's a nice strategic title, actually. Yeah, yeah he okay. said he so wanted to say. Uh -huh. It's overarching and specific at the same time. Something like somebody's doing a reference. That's a very good name. I like the name. Okay, good. Um, Brother Barnaby Bay, you have the last question. Now, Sister, Bar uh, Sister Marnice, did I cut you off just now? Uh, no, but why are you cutting off the questions? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we can, we can go a little longer, actually. There's two of y'all right that you said here. Huh? You said there's two of y'all right? Oh, 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 oh. Publisher. Brother Barnaby Bay? Yeah. When you spoke about the universe, mm -hmm. and you mentioned Odubuwa, mm -hmm. which is the brother of Obatala, mm -hmm. Uh, what could you tell me regarding to that and the Ife Ife being the center of all that? Uh -huh. Well, in my view, Ife is Yafa in the Bible, otherwise called Jaffa. Jaffa. Yes, Jaffa. But that's the Yemenite Jaffa, not, not there's a Jaffa also in Tel Aviv in, in uh, modern Israel. But um, that's first of all. Um, second of all, Odudawa, uh, Diop also talks about the connection of Odudawa to the, one of the ancient Egyptian uh, gods of, of the Dua, I suppose, or something like that. But, um, you know, Odudawa, that's, that has to be the name of, um, that's a very ancient name. You know, it was found in Asia as Dedan and Udad. Um, but the fact that it's related to Nimrod or Lamrudu has to be, you know, that's connected to the whole biblical tradition. So that's what mm -hmm. we know. You know, if they're saying that Nimrod is their forefather, mm -hmm. the Yoruba say Nimrod is their forefather. And they have they know about Odudawa and, and other other of these gods are actually prophets, you know, that are connected in that tradition in the, both in the like I said, the book of Yashar or Jashar and in the Old Testament. Yeah. Then that has any but, relation to like the, the Og God or the, or the something I don't know. If that's I'm why I'm. That's what I was thinking. Did Og he say that? Did Diop say that? <laughs> yeah. Did Diop say that? Og God word. That's what I'm trying to pick up. I don't know if I if I read that somewhere. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But um, all I know is that all I had put together. Um, in fact, I I skipped over that, or I might have taken out the slide that shows how all these. Deities of the Yoruba, which are found in other African societies, are also found in the Nile Valley mm -hmm. and in Mesopotamia mm -hmm. because Shango Enki, uh, Shango Ngi, Dango, <laughs> and um, I'm Chrome Shango, by the way. Hmm? I'm Chrome Shango. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, these Orishas are, you know, all found. Up even into India, you know. Wow. The same yeah, Mahanaga and Shango have the same uh, mythology about them in, in, in India and in Africa. Mm -hmm. And the word Orisha is the word Rishi. You know, the seven Rishis, so the seven, Rishi. seven Rishas, or oh, eight wow. Rishis. But yeah, there's, so that was going to be my next book I'm working on right now. <laughs> but yeah, that's very important because there's a book out now about the, um, um, Dogon and their connection to the Hebrew tradition, the Hebrew cycles, the Hebrew um, religious mm -hmm. um, festivals, you know, and, and how it could only be understood through their tradition. Wow. You know? And those are the people that say that they were the Nabatians, which is, sounds strange to me, but. Nabatians. Nabatians. Yeah, the Nabatians are very important because basically they were considered to be the people that were called Chaldeans as well. And had settled oh, yeah. Babylon, founded Babylon, and their leader was Nimrod, 
and all that. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Chaldeans? Oh, cold beans. Cold cold beans. Beans. Cold well, they eat yeah, like that. Okay. But, um, I got a question. <laughs> so you had mentioned, um, you know, one of the things you mentioned coming into this was bring your Bibles. Yeah. And so when the so-called conscious community does this big issue with, oh, well, the Bible's mythology, and therefore it can't be, it's not history, and we should we should throw it out, right? No, and um, <laughs> right. And now Prophet Noble Jali taught us. He said, don't throw away your Bibles because the use of the can. This is reported, he said, mm -hmm. don't throw away your Bibles because it's going to use to condemn the European women, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and you mentioned in, in the presentation about the people, about places mm -hmm. directly related to the Bible, mm -hmm. but you mentioned the difference between Yemenis and the Levant orientation. Right, right. As it relates to biblical right. understanding, could you right. explain that? Well, people have to understand. Look where Arabia is. It's next to Africa. It's on the same latitude of Sudan and southern Egypt and, and you know parts of mm. the Abyssinia. Mm -hmm. So that whole area was occupied by the same people. Both sides of the Red, Red sea, sea had the same people with the same names. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned that you know these Horite names are those of the the Gara and the um, Zephoni and all these people mentioned in ancient Africa as well. Um, today you find all the Horite, Edomite, Esau names and some of the Israelite names among these, these Yemeni people and they're also in Ethiopia. Wow. They're also, th these names are still there. Wow. You know? So that's what my, this book, like I said, it's coming out next month. God willing, you know, inshallah. Can I say, <laughs> um, can, can, can I, like, give a supplemental to that, because we're all lay people. She's scholar, a <laughs> super duper scholar. Yes. So for us lay people, what she was basic, what she was saying uh -huh. is that we've been given the wrong, just like with European psychology, we've been given the wrong orientation to right. certain things that we right. see. Mm -hmm. So right. the moment we start talking Bible, we start talking, we start thinking Levant in the northern area of what's now called the Middle East. Right. We're in the wrong location. <laughs> We're looking in the wrong location because we've been taught to look in the right. wrong location. Right. This is what she's saying. She's saying the very people in the Bible are still there mm. using the same names, and just in a in different their location. Lands and places. There you go. <laughs> They're in their lands and places, in the same. Right. All this, there's hundreds of places in the Bible that I mentioned that cannot be found in the Levant, but they are found They're in found Yemen. in Southern Arabia. Extending up to the Assyria, but you know, the whole entire Yemen, they are found. Especially Hadramaut. And the people are still known under the same names. Now, some of these people are not <laughs> not as dark skinned as they used to be, but many still are. And the ones that um, left early, you know, on up in Africa, also have the same names. So that's, you know, it's really ironic and it's, it's pitiful, but it's joyful at the same time. You know, that this is going to come out. You know? People think oh, that, you know, because in, in like page three, you know, in um, chapter uh, 47, instruction six of the Holy Front of More Science to America, we mention names and events that the Western world only knows via reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, oh, wow, we don't, that's not true because you guys got that out of the Bible and blah, 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 blah. That's another reason why this is so powerful mm -hmm. because this is not coming out of the Bible, mm -hmm. but the Bible confirms right. it. Right. Yeah. The Bible just confirms it. I'm not taking it from the Bible. The Bible's confirming. Well, the Bible's also confirming the Africans' traditions are coming from Canaan. Moorish. That's the main thing. It's wow. confirming what the Africans themselves have been saying for thousands of years. And Josephus, a Jewish, I don't know if he's European Jewish, I think he's European, Roman Jewish, he said for thousands of years, he said, the children of Keturah settled in Tragolite, Ethiopia, meaning this whole area um, east of the Nile and moved westward. Some of them moved westward. And also the Ketim people. Ketim, or um, uh, I don't know if Ketim was, um, I forget where they were from. I, I forget if that was Jacket or whatever. But he said they settled in, in um, North Africa. But that's, that myth is in Arabian mythology too, about Ketim. Ketim settling in, um, you know, 
the Amalekites selling these areas of Africa, North Africa, as Adites, people of Ad. Mm. So it's the same tradition, and there's no Japheth, no Shem, no Ham outside of these people. Wow. It's all only a small group of people that were involved. Like, if you have a group of people a few millenniums ago that were like 10,000, what do you think they're going to be after 3,000 years? Yeah, right. 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 They're going to be millions of people. Right. Right. People don't think so. That way. Yeah. So, um, not only that, one of the things that was, um, one of the things that you can't deny with what I'm doing is that the names of the people, they're all in, like in Arabia, you find in medieval, when they're talking about the Arabians and the Sulaim, Bani Sulaim, and all these people that, that the Arabs say were black, you find them in the same places, for example, they talk about the tribe of Manessa being around Medina. Now, who is around Medina? Which tribe is around Medina? Sulaim and Hawazim bin Mansur. Because the name Mansur, if you know about Arabic and how that, you know, how Arabic names in the north are different from Arabic names, um, comes from the word Manasir, the Manasir, or it's Manasseh with an IR ending on it. Yeah, these Salaam bin Mansur and the Salaam tribes have the tribes of Judah in them. They have the clan names of the tribe of Judah in them in the, medi in the medieval era. That's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. It's Crazy and, and wow. can't wait till people find out about. So in some ways, so in some ways, because um, you know you have people dispelling the myth, myth of how Islam spread in West Africa, mm -hmm. because these people had these uh, Sephardic great traditions. When Islam came in, it was a recognition, like, oh, this this seemed like our old stuff just mm -hmm. reformed. Probably, yeah, mm -hmm. that old time. That right. makes, makes the, sense. The sister had a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I heard you um, mention that uh, the how we we were taught that the Egyptian civilization um, is older than what it is, and you're saying mm -hmm. it's more recent. Mm -hmm. So, how recent do you think it is? Well, when I say when I'm talking about Egyptian civilization, I'm talking about the pharaonic era civilization. Now, those pyramids might be much, you know, some of them might be mm -hmm. much, much mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. But the um, pharaonic civilization, um, especially the latter dynasties, like the 18th dynasty and all that stuff, that's probably like eight centuries younger than, mm -hmm. and also the Saharan civilization is much younger than they're saying too. But it's only an alternative theorists are now bringing that out. Um, mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. that's going to help a lot when, when mm -hmm. you know, but the good thing is, like like I said, the person that, um, I don't even know if I'm supposed to give this, I should give this away. I didn't give it away. <laughs> but there's a guy that, um, an academic, white academic, uh, that did the forward for this book coming out. Um, and he's basically a, a specialist on um, um, Islamic and early religious exegesis, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's very w w reputable. He went, he was doctor from the University of Chicago, and he was like jumping for joy about this book. Wow. <laughs> he is so excited wow. that it's going to come out that he said he can't wait. Mm -hmm. Please, mm -hmm. please, mm -hmm. let me just write. Wow. Right. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, and the same thing with my publisher. My publisher was like, he call, kept calling me and saying, come on, get, get your stuff in. Because they can see, he's a, you know, they can see where everything's fitting in together. Yeah, right. yeah. And a lot of people, they're not going to be able to deny it. You know, because mm. I'm using all, that's the good thing. Well, that, truth. Yeah, I'm using their own, yeah. their own work. So. Mm. Yeah. You said the, mm. in my zones are mm. near, it says Nabi. Nabitians, Ishmaelites, called names. Those the the Nabit, the Nabatians. Yeah, Nabatians. They they all their names. Don't they all Ishmaelites, Shabbians, all the same names? You uh -huh. said, I think not the same names, they're the same people. Same people. <laughs> the the mother. You said they and they originally um, deified a mother goddess. What, what well, the the, the the before, I guess about five, to, you know, five to. 
10,000 years ago and before, yes, there was a mother goddess culture throughout the African and Afro-Asiatic world. So you see these big mother goddess sculptures all over the world and paintings too, you know, paintings. Mm -hmm. and, but the early Arabs themselves, um, some of those people that you see in the Bible, like Bilha, uh, um, Zil, Zil, what's it name? Zilpa, 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 and all those. Some of those have been identified as Arabian queens mentioned in the Syrian text. Yeah. So, and also the um, Bahil, Bahil or Bayil was an Arabian queen. That's where the that was one of the you know, I guess con so called concubines of Jacob. That's an allegorical thing, you know, statement. But um. Identified, for example, I, I just want to focus in, this is not really, but <laughs> I identified how the tribe of Bahila, this is an Arab tribe of Bahila of Yemen, and spreading into the Najed or South, in Central Arabia, how they have the same clan names as the children of Bilha in the Bible, yeah. wow. which are the Israelite, you know, which are Israelite people. Wow. So, which you know that's but I've done that with so many of the biblical figures, and that's why I'm saying these 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 men, these these um, academics, the scholars are they are like out of their mind. Like they can't wait till coming out because they also know that you know a lot of the stuff that's been coming out is BS, especially trying to put Israel as the center of everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know. mm -hmm. so a lot of people are afraid to say th certain things, but I'm basically. Mm -hmm doing it without saying it. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. putting out certain mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. without saying, look, you, you, you've given us a bunch of bullshit. That's what it is. But you, but you, you're, you're, not, you're not going by being told. You, you, you connecting the dots. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. She's providing the dots for the right. other researchers yeah. to connect. Mm -hmm. yes. For the I will go. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, it seems to me that this uh, word and uh, concept is very important. And understanding the um, total paradigm of what you're giving to us, and I want to make sure I grasp it. The mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, the new context in which we should be looking at this um, mm -hmm. information. Could yeah. you go, go into that yeah. a little bit more in depth mm -hmm. one more time, please? Mm -hmm. Well, the Levant refers to modern day Syria, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan primarily. And in those places, those places are where we're considered the biblical context, or the context of, you know, where Israel and Canaan were, and the Philistines and many other Arameans, all those people. But what me and the, this guy that wrote Bible came from Arabia, and, and there's a couple other people that are, you know, from the Middle East actually that have identified some of these things. We've discovered that it was, that's impossible, and that's why the, the Israeli scholars themselves have said that there's not enough information to prove Israel has existed. Oh. Israel and Canaan, as they say, mm -hmm. they mentioned about the conquest of Canaan, um, Joshua, and all these other, you know, they just have not found it. The real um, objective scholars in Israel, Israeli archaeologists have said this, this didn't happen. You know, and if it did happen, it happened only in a mythological, or it was mythological, or it was much later, or, you know, but they just, compressed everything into a, a myth, you know? There's no historical reality there. Mm -hmm. But, but, yeah, well, so what the book is about, and what I, my studies have been about the last, I guess, decade, are the, how the, that, these people, the, the um, Afro-Asian people of the Yemen transferred up to, to Hijaz and into the Persian Gulf and finally into Syria and Iraq and brought you know, they're not, and their names with them. Their names, and they named this similar places, just like in, in uh, America, uh, similar place names to those places in England, you know? Right, right, yeah. right. New York. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very right. interesting you said that because uh, New York, before was it incorporated, they said it came from York. Yeah. And was incorporated from York, mm. this, this country. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, from York. Mm. Yeah, it came from Europe. Yeah, and you were incorporated. Yeah, and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. so these people brought those names, and you can see, because the names, they settled in places like um, Palestine. You know, the Arabs settled in Palestine, and those names, many of them came after the Arabs invaded Palestine, which is like 
after the seventh century, you know. But there's still people in what's called the Jordan Valley, or it's called the, the Gur, Al Gur, that the people still look Arab. In other words, still are African looking. And they have the names of the ancient Hejazis or the early Hejaz people. People from Hejaz, which is where Me Mecca, Medina, and Dida were. Okay? So they just moved into those areas. Most of them, you know, after the Arab invasion. There's some of them named Canaanite, Canaan are there still. Mm -hmm. In Jordan and in Israel, even um, and some name, uh, some of them have Nabatian names, you know. But yeah, so but those people like are in the Jordan Valley where it's very hot, and no, no other people have moved into them, to there or could stand moving in there. That's the only reason why they're still there. So, but and I and I talk about that in the book coming up and uh, uh, you know how the names got when the names got there and how they got there and um, like the Salimi, the Salim people. Like if, if you know um, Al Jahiz, he talks about the Banu Sulaim and how they were black at the lava of the Hara, mm -hmm. which is different places in the mm -hmm. Arabian Peninsula are called the Hara because they're volcanic area and have black, mm -hmm. black volcanic, right? And so they settled in northern northern part of Arabia, okay, from the from the south, and um, some of the people in the Jordan area. Um, well, first of all, the Salini always did, they had this kind of allegiance with the Nabataeans, right? Or the Al Nubait. And what turns out that the Al Nubait were the ancestors of the people called Khazraj and um, Aus, mm -hmm. and that settled in Hejaz. They were the, the big people I told you about. But the Salini were not as big. They included the Bali and other tribes I just talked about that had settled in the north, right? So what I discovered is that. The alliance between that was in inscriptions between the Nabataeans and the Sulaimi, who were the Shalom Judean people of Judah, Shalom ben Mansur, meaning the Shalom of Manasseh, um, and the Khazraj, they kept an alliance, and the, the Khazraj asked to keep their alliance with the Sulaim. Mm -hmm. The Nabataeans asked to keep this line, their alliance with Sulaim, but Muhammad said, no, you can't do that. Oh. That's a great contract. And that contract was a thousand thousand years old, you know, and they kept it. They were called Al Nubait and they, their genealogy takes them back to Thalaba. I don't know if you're familiar with this Arab genealogy, but Thalaba is mentioned in the Bible as Shalaba. Mm -hmm. it, mean, it means fox. Fox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all these towns in the in the Bible we're talking about are in Yemen. And that's where the Az people, the Khazraj Owls came from. So I'm going to do somebody's going to say something. He has a question. Who? Don't think they told me about what he did. That's all they told me. You know, I ain't saying I'm just listening. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 what they told me was about Yemen. You know, no, no, everything I'm hearing. Do you understand? It's not. You got a question on this side. The brother right here. I, I wanted to know the name of that judge. The Kadi of the Medij? Yeah. Um, I just got it. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up for you. Oh. But you know, Kadi means judge. Kadi means judge. And the Medij are. Oh, century, you said? Well, the, the judge was actually from the, I think, the 8th century. But the writer who quoted him, I don't know what book it's from or even if it's still around, but. I know that the, the one who quoted him, that book is called Unique, The Unique Necklace or Farik al, uh, um, anyway, you can look at it as a, The Unique Necklace. Farid al, al Farid, something Al Farid, I forget. But it's by Ibn, well, the book is pu is is translated by Isa Bulata, a really specialist. Thank you. And it's by Ibn Abd Rabihu. Ibn Abd Rabihu or mm -hmm. Rabihi, who was a who was a, um, actually I think he was from originally from Persia or Turkey or something, but he was from Cordoba. He was brought up in Cordoba, and he wrote about that, which is surprising. Wow. You know what it says in Wikipedia? I just looked it up. 
It's called the Unique Necklace yeah. or the um, Al Farid. Yeah, Al Right, Al -Fari. by um, by um, Ibn Al Rabi. Right. Yeah. It says it's an anthology attempting to encompass all that a well-informed person had to know in order to pass in society as a cultured and refined individual. Composed by Ibn Ab Rabi, a Moorish writer and poet associated with Cordova, now in Spain. Seriously, so that's how it's. I just read it. Yeah. All that's crazy. <laughs> 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 but, it's, but when they say Moor, they're just talking about the fact that he's a Muslim in Spain, but he might not have been like a, a real Moor. He might have been, you know, one of the uh, Persians or Turks or slaves or the Arabs or, you know. Mm -hmm. And that goes no, back to what you were saying about the difference between ethno history and nationality. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But see, a lot of people are real more, but they don't know they're real more, though. Exactly. So that's why it's so tricky. Yeah. Sister Marty, nah. this is a sheet. This is a sheet. I just want to know why I can get all this tape. We got it on. Uh, it's recorded. Oh, okay. Okay. that's what not. Oh, no. <laughs> Not all of it. Listen, okay. we're like, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, I've got to see this before it comes out. Listen, we're, we're live streaming, and I have certain parts, like when you said, is this being recorded? I'm going to go back, I, I marked a minute, and you can clip. Like, this, it's private now. It's not live streaming at this uh, okay. moment. It's streaming onto an online, um, our YouTube uh, platform, and all our videos are marked private. We record everything, but we don't put every media mm -hmm. public, so that supply and demand, we just don't want to have a bunch of content out there. So we can, before we put it out, we'll edit it. I'll send it to you so you can look at it and, yeah. and see that you're comfortable, and then we'll publish it. But it'll all be available. We're having a little problem. I want to upgrade this camera. It was having a problem with the light. Um, that's why I kept moving it. it the, 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 apparently, the, um, the projector uh, was so bright on the screen. Maybe it's the contrast to the wall, and it was kept going in and out, trying to, trying oh, to get the right lighting. Focus. So it's not a great video. And so, sometimes I move it when you would switch to the slides where it had an image. It would sustain itself, but whenever it was just words and a white page, it was it started going in and out like it couldn't focus. Um, so yes, we'll have a recording, um, brother. Uh, Star. Right, okay, go ahead. I, I um, had a quick question. If I could, I wanted to add it before the subject got too far along. We were talking about names, and I, uh, before I stated, I wanted to say that more since we're, I wanted to extend the video, and we'll close when Sister Marnici kind of winds down the questions wind down. We'll close out, so we're going to continue to record. The food is available for anyone that would like to eat. If you could just quietly, so that the camera doesn't pick up too much uh, disturbance, maybe one or two at a time. If you want to go over and order some food and you can bring it back, we're going to continue to record. You, you mentioned the names and how some some names. I mean, even it was earlier you had mentioned uh, other names that uh, Moses is named uh, related to, but in the Bible they call him Moses. Yeah, right. Um, and even just now you're talking about certain surnames fa or family names that are associated to other things. I remember, I think it was the All These Men recording when you did that particular lecture, you had mentioned a connection to the name Smith was connected to a certain group of people, and I'm, I'm trying to remember off memory which group of people no, that it she was. was. she was saying that they were Smiths. No, they were Smiths. They like were they, Smiths. They worked with the... With okay, the they were Ironworkers, Smiths. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Praise it's no a scholar, <laughs> I, I know it's a lot of information. I was, I was trying to recall what group that she was saying it to, because when you said it, I, a lot of what you say makes my eyebrows jump up. I can't get it all on paper. And then I, I don't want to lose, I'm like the type of note taker, I don't want to lose focus on what you're saying, and I'm trying to write it all down. So uh, I'll, I'll figure out what it is, and I'll ask that later. Um, so that was my question. Peace. Okay. That's actually interesting, you know, the, 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 the connection between Smiths and scholars, and, and, and also on Professor Maniji's insistence on our people or a Masonic people as in operative builders. Right. 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 Well, that's We're where just, Kabbalah came from. Of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so far, they were a lot of them were playing the Jews, and they were the scholars. The one guy were the scholars. You can look it up. I'm just I just gather from every every place, and it says that the one guy and the one quarter were the scholars of Sudan. They were the Smiths, the metal Smiths, and um, 
Mason, Mason, you know, they were the builders of those stone things. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's God. <laughs> so you have to know mathematics and all that for, you know. Exactly. You can't just, mm -hmm. That's where they learn in groups, Masonic groups like this. Geometry, calculus. But yeah, that's what the Moors are known for. So, I mean, Timbuktu, and um, remember that was the number one uh, university in the area of West Africa, or not, not in West Africa, but the world, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Europeans go down there to... Yeah, yeah, but they don't teach, they don't teach us uh, that's, well, that's the problem. Yeah, but I am. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but it's out there, and people don't want to well, dig into that, know who they are. Well, yeah. well that's why I'm going to bring up now, the scholarship thing is, it has to be brought out. It does. Because the value, you know, there's such a lack of values for it. Learning in, in African American culture. I don't want to call it black because that's just black a bad name. Playing old lack of discipline. I just get it. Yeah. 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 Well, no, see, created, but. But see. Sharing it with the kids. Yeah, but be created by giving them your heritage because we can't yeah, just entertain, I mean. we can't entertain them all the time. I mean, this is, we have to be more. Well, we you know how loud we are in class and stuff? It's not like. Right. Well, it's we it's have, to, we have to be more peace, Islamic. That's what, mm. that's what yeah, Islam that, that. is about. Solemn. Solemn. Being solemn. Be. Stop jumping around the They don't know what the words mean. That's the yeah. Yeah. yeah, the point I was making yeah. is we have to consider where they are now. <laughs> okay. take, take that into consideration, observe them to see how they process information, what, what's get them excited, mm -hmm. and we infuse the knowledge into those mediums to bridge them over to where we want them to be. We can't just totally put okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this, but and I'm not kidding either, but I think like from a young age, if you're living in an area where most of the kids are not... Um, you know, don't value education because their parents don't value education. You either have to homeschool them or you have to start having schools that are like more boot camps where, you know, mm. you can't just, can't take hey, everything. My head. It, what? Know, <laughs> but that's, it, when it, I speak to my, my wife, I, I'm telling her, you know, because I'm a very, I, I tell my wife that I, I, I'm a very warlike individual. Yeah, okay. You see what I'm saying? So when I, when I see the young boys, in my mind, I'm like, the only thing I can think of is I need to get like a, but it's white women having it in these schools. Huh? You know it's white women having it in these schools. That's the problem. It's, it, and and because my well, wife's mother's a teacher, and she said, it seems like whenever you do have a certain collective of black female female teachers, it's it's straight going to operations. It's three if three or four of y'all is in the in the break room, hey, what's going on? What's going on? What the heck? It's it's, it's like that. Because they notice, she she said she noticed when we go to school and it's more so-called black teachers. There, you notice at that school they have little bits of extra things that goes on. The the, the black history month's a little longer. Yeah. yeah. You, you, oh,